All right, we are live. And thanks, John and Jay, for joining me. Jay actually came on time for once. Didn't come in and just derail my streams in the middle, which is nice. I think this is the first time I've been here at the start. And normally, apart from apart from the um, uh, apart from the the workshop we did at the start when we first met, I think every time I've been on your stream, it's at least half an hour in. For sure. Uh, so, so, John, just if, if you haven't seen one of the streams before, what happens is I usually am live coding and Jay is horrified by something I'm doing. And he's like, no, you can do something different. You can do this way. It'll be way, way more performant. And then I'll, I'll start talking to him through the chat and he'll eventually just end up on the camera talking me through the solution. Um, that's, that's not always so, how it goes. It's normally my ears are burning and then I come in and you're like, oh, we were just talking about you. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Um, yeah, so a bit of a background. It would be great to get some backgrounds on people because I do want to try and get some, uh, for once, this will be a strange one for you, Jay, but I'm actually going to try and get some useful content out of this one as well. We're going to try and uh, I actually have some questions I want to ask people, which is outrageous for me. I'm and uh, <laughs> no, like as professional as I can be, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a real, a real professional job other than this fake microphone that I have. There's nothing in it. <laughs> the, what I'd love to get, I'll start with you, John, is kind of just a little bit of your background, where you're at now, and then we'll get over to Jaden after that as well. Yeah. So about 13 years experience in, in the .NET space, kind of .NET uh, web development. Uh, pretty much started back in the old web forms days and then MVC, and then now we're we're doing uh, Angular where I work now, so one of the one of the very few who are doing Angular, but you know I have some React and a little bit of Vue experience, so uh, I know a little bit about that. But yeah, um, although we, we've been talking a little bit earlier about my channel, uh, I do more machine learning, but I'm still within the .NET space, and then going over uh, machine learning on uh, Microsoft technologies. So and still using the C sharp and F sharp. Uh, languages that that are in .NET, so yeah, it's good to kind of you can use the same stuff kind of together. Nice, um, and I guess the nice part about using Angular is you were using TypeScript before it was mm -hmm. really cool. Then all of a sudden, yeah, because there was nearly a uh, a, a divide between all the the React people and the Angular people who would and wouldn't do TypeScript, and it was nearly a reason not to do Angular when it started mm -hmm. for some yeah. people, and now uh, a lot of people are eating those words. Yeah, I remember when Angular two first came out, I started messing with it, and it was just a pain to mess with. Because uh, I think before Webpack, it was using System.js, and it was just, just to get a NPM package in, it was just a horrible experience. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was doing AngularJS. Uh, Jay, were you ever doing AngularJS before as well? I'm just guessing so. I think a lot of us touched that. I've touched most things in a non way uh, <laughs> yeah, in a in a professional manner, you've touched most Here things. Here we go. It's already started. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I said in a professional way, you've touched many things. That's all. I'm I'm covering you here legally, you know, because mm. I know lots about the law. Apparently, um, <laughs> Jay, why don't you? Uh, I don't think you've ever actually on a stream of mine talked about your background either. So that'll be interesting. Um. Yeah, I probably haven't actually. Um, so yeah, I I, I try and uh, I normally like people to introduce me with their perspective because I hate talking about myself, but I managed to do it anyway. Um, I don't know. I've been doing this for say um, so I've been a developer for over ten years now. Um, I started as a middleware engineer. I didn't want to do engineering at all. Um, I actually wanted to be an architect. And got into software development, was a middle engineer, wasn't very good at it. And then I met front end development. And I started with that side of things and doing like all the logic and stuff. And then the last, I know I've always kind of liked visual stuff, but never really done it. And then the last few years, I've done all the visual stuff. And then yeah, it's gone from there. Um, although people might not have heard that because supposedly the sound is too low. <laughs> um, let, let's find out. So is the sound too low for everyone for all of us? Or like who's who's or is it just me? Mike as well. Yeah, let's find out. I can tell well, 
I, I would have just wound you up, uh, Jay, and said, Jay is the guy that just does CSS, you know, just, uh, yeah, and then you'd be like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that always winds me up. Jay is a little quiet. Oh, Let me check the settings here just to make sure. Nah, I turn my gain up, but I always turn it down. Now I'll be really loud. Yeah. I always have to turn it down for my stream because uh, cause I don't know if you have this problem because I have so much stuff mounted onto this desk. I get like feedback when I go into Ah, it. do you? Yeah, so I, I noticed it on a couple of like my Twitch stream um, outputs that like when you watch the playback, you can hear like a little buzzing noise and it's because like the mic gets feedback from the Scarlet. It's, it's really annoying. Um, Ah, okay. I, I'm sure people will be able to hear it now anyway. So everyone's saying it's fine now. Caleb said it's... Uh, this is on YouTube as well, Caleb, uh, just so you know. Um, and feel free to join us. If you ping me on Discord, Caleb, you can jump in as well because, you know, that's uh, that's how we roll, I guess. Um, excellent. So um, I don't know how much... Did, ever, did anyone catch any of that or was Jay too low to catch his story there? Because mm -hmm. now that you've had a practice run, Joe, Jay... You can Joe. you can go again, Joe, <laughs> <laughs> Joe the Bear, Jay. Uh, if, now that you've had a practice run, now you can do it with more confidence and punch through it, and tell them how you came to be the CSS guru that you are today. Damn you! <laughs> <laughs> um, you you know you did you touched off uh, something I did want to ask uh, very early on because it's it's very interesting um, for people who are starting out to figure out kind of what drew people into the field. Like for myself, when I was starting out, I um, I just got, I was really sick. I had arthritis and the uh, I just started Googling like best jobs I can get without a degree because I needed to pay some uh, bills and look after myself. And it was a very just financial decision. It was like, here's something I can do without a degree. I'll learn it. And I got into the career in a very selfish, uh, financially driven r reasons. Um, so I just want to hear from both of you and John, if you want to kick off here as well, uh, what kind of got you into this field or what drove you into it? Yeah. Well, so I, I think it's an interesting story, but everybody else may not. Uh, so let's see, I was, uh, it was a summer before my senior year of high school and, you know, I just kind of channel surfing. Right. And then I see this GameSpot TV show. I say, what? A show for video games? So I watch it, and I said, this is cool. What else do they have on here? And it was like a, a bunch of tech-related shows, and it it was a Tech TV, which I'm not sure if anybody is familiar with that channel. But I started watching it, and they had a couple shows where it was um, I focus on computers, computer help, and and stuff like that. And I just fell in love with it. I just I religiously watched it every day. and that kind of got me into programming. And so when I went to college, I went into computer science. Nice. Um, yeah, so you you have a degree, John, then as well, do you? <laughs> yeah, I do. Uh, interesting. And what are you, uh, and I'll, I'll jump into Jay on uh, what, what got you into it, because you've already started kind of that story as well, Jay. Um, but what do you think, uh, in the current state of colleges and everything else, do you think it's... Uh, and this is not to drive people away from colleges or into colleges, just kind of what do, what do you think? Was it a, do you think it made a big impact on your career now, uh, looking back on it? Or would you have gotten into the field without it, I guess? Is that me or John? <laughs> John. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know, because... I feel like uh, it was a good timing because it was the senior year of my high, of high school, so I was able to make the decision. Uh, if I if I didn't get into it, I've, I had planned to like go into criminology and be like a police officer or something like that. Uh, so pretty pretty different uh, shift there. Um, but I kind of feel like eventually I probably would have fell into it because it's. Uh, I really enjoy doing it. So nice. Uh, yeah, it, it helps when you're doing a job that you enjoy as well. Like, right. I think that's a a, a a blessing for me anyway. I I love what I do every day now, 
Um, so it makes it really easy to get up in the morning. So I think that's the right. other, other thing for a lot of people is like, it's a struggle depending on what you're doing. And it really is a struggle to get out of bed in the mornings. And so Jay, you, you originally wanted to be an architect. And yeah, so I'd say, um, I'd say it definitely put me in the place where I am now, but if I was to do it again, um, and it's really hard to empathize with how you would, I, I keep saying it because I've been having calls with various people and I keep saying like, I can't imagine what it'd be like to enter now. But if I was, I'd, there's so much good material out there for this kind of thing that's applied. I'd, I'd probably go like a different route. But yeah, I wanted to be an architect um, and basically got told that my math wasn't quite there. And um, I was, I always like tinkering with stuff. So uh, my IT classes were like doing things like Excel and stuff like that. And you used to be able to make like, I don't know if anyone's ever done it, but you used to have like make macros and stuff inside excel and almost make them like an app um and we did all that kind of stuff and yeah they used to the, the teachers kind of like yeah you're pretty good at that like you should maybe just do computer science and i was like yeah all right whatever like i'll give it a go <laughs> and um i i knew where i wanted to go so i did a bachelor's at um king's college london and then i did a financial systems engineering course like a master's course at university college london and um yeah, in the first term of that, like the first term of my undergrad, like I was ready to pack it in. Like I hated it. Um, I didn't understand anything. <laughs> and I just wanted to get to the skate park. So um, it kind of clicked for some reason after second term. Um, I found, or after first term even, I, I found that I was really into it. And then I kind of just, um, yeah, I just found a way that worked for me. And the way that worked for me was I don't do very well in lecture environments. So I just took everything in advance and kind of learned it myself. But the reason I say that it kind of shaped where I went, because I all the time I was doing that, I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to do like consultancy. I really want to work for Accenture. Um, that was like the thing I was really set on for some reason. And then when I did my what an odd, an odd business to be fixated on. Uh, yeah, well, I think they, they did like a careers fair. Um, when I was at um, King's, like they came in and they did, like, you know, like you have those careers fairs in like the final years and they'll be like, um, you know, these companies will come in and check you out and be like, hey, you can come and apply for us. And I don't know, I, they must have gave out really good pens or something. And um, I was like, yeah, this will be this will be a great one to go for. But I did my master's instead because I still wasn't sure. And they put us on like group projects. So like practical sort of placements, they were kind of like tech internships but i ended up giving like doing doing my group project at bank of america in canary wharf which was like pretty pretty rad um did this project and then as part of my last like presentation uh, a vendor came in that was going to take that project essentially uh, or carry on with those kind of things and i ended up getting picked up by a company through my through my placement so i kind of fell into it in a way um and then, yeah, I did middleware development and I really couldn't get my head around the product, but I ended up getting exposed to like front end stuff. And then I, I went off from there. So if it wasn't for that, who knows where I might have gone. I'd probably still end up doing front end eventually, I guess. But <laughs> Nice. Yeah. Um, it, it's funny. I think a lot of people um, that do it take for granted how much knowledge they get from it as well, because I know I did, I did um, a semester and a half uh, of computer science when I was 18 and I was just too young. I dropped out from drinking too much and partying too much when I was in college. Um, full, full disclosure, wow. You know, nobody would expect that from me, I'm sure. Um, but the, it really uh, it, it really filled in a lot of kind of like the logical side of things because we got to use some of the logic boards and circuitry and things that are, were a deep scientific thing, where I, which I thought were pointless at the time. Now, later in my career, I'm just like take things for granted that I know how logic works, where a lot of people who have only learned off YouTube videos don't have that fundamental understanding. That's like, that is like the fundamental thing as well, right? Because you could learn, like I think back to what tech I was doing and I think that the projects we did, I think one of them, we did like a lot of Java and then we did C, I did C Sharp and .NET and I think one of the projects like make a web browser and stuff, but as long as like you, you create, like you learn the fundamentals, like we learn all the fundamentals, like ifs and elses and uh, tautologies and all that kind of stuff from uh, like theory classes. But then they they apply to anything you do. Like you could have done any languages. 
Yeah. But in a For really abstract sense, right? It's all the same stuff. It's all ifs and ones and zeros if we're going to go that high level. But <laughs> yeah, but like understanding that is a, a, a yeah. it's it's a difficult concept when you're facing it later. Like it's harder to learn it afterwards when you've already built the mental model of mm. what you think happens in a machine. Um, because you do fill in the blanks as you learn concepts. And then from there, I guess um, it's very difficult to uh, unlearn the, the things you assume, uh, I guess, as you move along. Um, I have, uh, look, I have a special guest uh, as well here. A good friend of mine, Tej, is joining the stream as well. Look at this. God. Hello. <laughs> Edge is coming in on his fancy new computer. You finally got it up and running after exactly. uh, about a hundred day wait. Was it Tej? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, close to hundred days. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Wait, 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 what, what are we doing? Like, I thought we were doing Apex Legends. Like, are we just sitting and talking? We're <laughs> 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 <Okay>, Sure. Let's <laughs> do <laughs> that. <laughs> well, uh, you, you, yeah, we're, like you have a beer there as well. I think. Uh, I think I seen a, a can of Guinness or something. And yeah, yeah, oh. I knew it. Get, it's, getting it in. We can't do a. We can't do Apex Legends because your thirty ninety can't handle it. Ah, uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I guess this is what I'm doing now. I'm running a Chrome browser on my thirty ninety. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, hopefully it lasts. Hopefully it lasts. Oh, Tej. you never uh, know. <laughs> so, so just so you know, John uh, Tej is actually a friend of mine locally here as well. Um, okay. Depending on how many beers we've had, we usually stay friends over the weekends. Um, <laughs> <you know. laughs> but uh, yeah, it's a, a great to have you on as well, Tej. You were, did a workshop with me recently as well on serverless, and oh, yeah. uh, I just I just asked the lads how they kind of got into tech or what drove them into it and their path. So you might as well right. fill yourself in here now as well. Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, I don't think I've really, uh, you know, spoken about this publicly or in a stream. But uh, yeah, just to give you a little. Oh, I hope uh, it's legal. I hope it's legal. Oh uh, yeah, I'll have to choose my words very carefully. <laughs> okay. According to the documents I have. Yes. <laughs> or I don't have. <laughs> right. So. Uh, you know, I uh, finished my uh, college as a mechanical engineer. So I did mechanical engineering, you know, four years and all that. And uh, I actually really enjoyed my college. Uh, like, to be honest, like mechanical engineering is fun. And, you know, like really getting down to sit down and, you know, work with machines. And uh, I used to do a lot of robotics in college and, you know, like uh, all those, you know, li like the one that you and I attended, you know, like the war robots and all that. So I used to build, you know, that kind of stuff and attend different, uh, you know, just competitions and, you know, just just have fun. Uh, but then, uh, when I started looking out for a job, I realized that job is nowhere near, you know, what I was studying. So it was more, it was more like management, you know, not really sitting down and, uh, you know, focusing on the tech or, you know, even designing the tech, uh, like I think, uh, in mechanical, like, you know, we are trying to just reuse the, uh, old design because, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's very different from software, right? Like there's a lot more investment when you're actually working with actual parts and hardware, uh, you know, as compared to software, like we, we can't just console.log and see what's going wrong. So, you know, there's a yeah. lot of just, hmm, metal is shattering. Yeah. <laughs> console.log that and just see what happens. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, still shattering. So, uh, no, but to be fair, you know, uh, yeah. So that's where uh, I realized that the job is not going to be what I expected it to be. And, uh, you know, it was about time I started looking for a different career. Uh, there was a friend of mine who was working in IT at the time, and he had a very similar background uh, as mine. And, uh, you know, he changed his career, uh, learned Java, and started doing back-end development. So I spoke to him, and uh, he was, you know, uh, again, the second aspect was that I was terribly paid. And, uh, you know, that was just not okay. I was living with my parents, so it was okay at the time. But, like, I realized that soon after, you know, I would not be able to afford my own bills, you know, if I continue working like this. So, uh, yeah, I spoke to the friend. He said he's... You know, he's paid, uh, you know, pretty well, uh, at least compared to what I was paid at the time. And he's enjoying his work. So I asked him more about it. And uh, I started looking into, you know, jobs and what kind of work do you have to do? So I, yeah, I started, uh, you know, I, I was very interested in doing that. So I took up a boot camp and I learned Java. And uh, two and a half months into the boot camp, uh, I got an interview and uh, I actually landed my first job then. So it was kind of a funny story. I got my uh, first job. 
and you know uh, everything came through and uh, you know everything worked out okay the next day there was another interview and i was like i don't need to attend that interview like i, I have one job i don't need a second job come on uh but somehow you know i decided like okay let's just attend it anyway and see how that goes i attended the second interview and it was the second job that i actually ended up taking because you know i was paid better and the job was much much better like i was doing actual back end development whereas in the first job it was more like an intern of sorts and uh, yeah that that worked out well so that's how i saw it and you know uh, from there on you know just jumping jobs working with different clients working with different people just like yourself and uh, you know just learning different sides of uh, software development so uh, that's how that's how it went really <laughs> Nice. And that's an interesting. We've a good spread of different languages here as well, where C sharp, uh, F sharp, and the Java, JavaScript as well. Java and JavaScript are basically the same, though. So it's the. Yeah, exactly. It's, fine. <laughs> yeah. it's not for anyone who's taking us seriously. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. I, actually, I, I shouldn't be. Uh, I shouldn't be messing with that because I, I I do hope that some people that are new to web development are actually watching this, and uh, that might be very confusing. They are totally different things. So yeah, um, yeah, interesting. So then, I, I kind of on me giving terrible advice there. I would love to kind of hear from you. What was the bet? You can choose here whether you've the best or worst piece of advice you've ever gotten uh, in your career so far. Uh, John, you might as well fire ahead. You're smiling oh, there, so I feel oh, like you have something. I'm trying to remember if I got this or if I just experienced it on my own. I can't remember which. Um, but, and this, this definitely hits home. I don't know how many times this happened to me, but man, if, if you get on the problem, you're just stuck, can't do it, just take a break. Or better yet, just be done for the day, get some sleep. And the next day, you'll, I, I promise, or I can almost promise, you can, uh, you can pretty, pretty much solve it when, the next day. Because that's happened so many times for me. I just, I get so stuck. I was like, man, I don't know what to do. And then I just say, well, I'll just come back at it tomorrow. Then the next day, within five, 10 minutes, thinking about this, oh, let me try this. Oh, it works. So, there is nothing more frustrating than that moment as well. As <laughs> as nice it is to be unblocked, I think we've all felt that where a good sleep yeah. has just made something super simple. Um, mm -hmm. And I know, especially when you're learning, that is very difficult to like take your way or, t or just you think you're going to think your way out of the solution. Mm -hmm. And you think if you're just going to keep on punching it, that it will eventually break. But usually it's just you're building on the, the mistake you made originally. So yeah, definitely sound advice there as well. Um, and going then, Tej, you might as well tell us. It's probably, it, if it's terrible advice for me, I, I don't say it because I know I've given you plenty <laughs> of terrible advice as well, Tej. <laughs> no, to be fair, like you give good career advice and I have to give you that, like you, you do. So, uh, no, again, uh, I think this is something that we spoke about on our stream as well, uh, where I think one of my mentors once told me that, uh, you know, you just try to learn, build and deploy and, you know, always follow that cycle. And uh, for me, it was at the time like, okay, if it, you know, like, why do I have to deploy it as well? Why do I need to learn all of that? And soon enough, I realized that, uh, you know, when you start building something, uh, you have a very, you know, narrow mindset that, you know, okay, you know, again, the whole, uh, you know, it works on my machine thing. So, you know, you start kind of thinking about that. Uh, and, you know, there's a whole lot of, uh, you know, th there's like a whole gray area there that you're not aware of. For example, when I started working, uh, you know, people were using environment variables. I was like, why do you need to do that? Why can't you just hard code stuff? And, uh, they were like, you know, in different environments, you connect to different databases. So like, what, you have different databases? No, hold on. What what, what, are, what do you mean by different environments? And that's where, you know, I had to take a step back and, you know, really like, look into the, uh, art, you know, the, the architecture and the infrastructure side of things as well. It's more or less, you know, just understanding that your code is not just, you know, what you're writing right now, but, you know, it has to go through a whole life cycle. And, you know, when you start deploying or when you start looking into the architecture or the infrastructure side of things, you get a better vision, uh, in my opinion and that uh, you start looking at your application as you know a whole product and you know not just the you know the one thing that you're working on so i think yeah that i think that was one of the best advices and uh, it kind of helped me a lot uh, you know in my career even to just accelerate you know uh, like as a backend engineer there was absolutely no reason for me to look uh, into devops or front end but then uh, i took that advice and i started looking into different uh, aspects of the application and uh, yeah it helped me uh, grow as an architect really so 
yep that that really helped uh the worst advice uh uh <laughs> uh it was probably one of the nights when you told me you don't really have to look at your bank balance when you go to a bar but uh <laughs> <laughs> i definitely i definitely had said that you don't need that negativity in your life for exactly. sure <laughs> <laughs> uh no to be fair like you know most of the people have you know usually given uh, very good advice so i can't really think of you know a particularly bad advice uh, off the top of my head but yeah think of any help yeah i'll just jump in so yeah <laughs> i'll just jump in if i think of something nice and jay uh yeah <laughs> i'm struggling i'm struggling to think so because you said career advice and i don't know it's kind of a different take i guess cuz um i don't have like any so i don't this is going to sound really like i'm a loner uh, i don't have any friends no i i don't have any friends that do tech like at, like that i actually see like that i actually know of or live near like none of my friends that i normally see or you know they're all people i play sport with or i know through other means and they don't do tech i don't think any of them do any tech related kind of thing so it's kind of hard to like normally you know you it's different now we have these online communities i like mean you chat all the time like and stuff like that and it's it's really different so i guess you kind of I can say I really received or have my like, any particularly bad or good advice cuz I just kind of made it up as I gone along. Um <laughs> but then that's kind of how you find out a lot. So if I was to give it um mine would be to just just always follow what you enjoy and just just take a punt like just go with it. Um for example like with myself and we've we've had this chat before like I um used to do all this kind of code just as like my 9 to 5 great i just want to get to like football soccer training if there's any us listeners and i just want to like you know pay the bills and play video games <laughs> but that kind of switched when i started doing more open source stuff and then i started doing that and i was working for a big corporate company and um i hope it was a censure No it wasn't it was a big big financial <laughs> one and I thought yeah I've made it I've made it this is great but I actually really hated it uh, I hated the environment I hated what I was doing I I didn't enjoy it it was a long commute and I was like do you know what I'm going to do what I want to do and I just decided screw it like I'm just going to go and work for myself I got no backup plan here uh money was low in the bank at the time and I just took a dive and did it and i think it's one of them like we've said that before like if you're going to do freelance you're going to do contracting like you you see it all the time people go uh, i don't know if i'm ready for that i don't know if i'm good enough for that like you, you'll never do it if you keep ans- asking that like you just got to do it and you'll find out um cuz it's like that fight or flight right you've got to learn otherwise they just get someone else so yeah i kind of went down that route and it was kind of the best thing i ever did so since then i've always just followed exactly what i want to do on my own terms and if you do that uh for the most part you'll be happy so <laughs> i guess that's the yeah. best the best advice i could give that i've kind of received from myself <laughs> no that no, it is interesting because it's um there is no right path and i think a lot of people and it's often a debate you see um uh with people is like you have to be passionate you have to be you know you have to love absolutely everything you know there's parts of my job that I dislike that I have to do to get to the parts I enjoy um mm. and like that's part of it there's good and bad to it it's mostly good though when i put it in comparison to uh my old jobs of like uh hitting my hands on steel while servicing cars or fixing washing machines and things that like i'm like and i've said this to tej he's he's heard me sla- uh, abusing people in an o- in the office when people are giving out i'm like your your biggest problem is you might have a, an overly heated latte in the office like <laughs> <laughs> you know i like i like to think like it is a pretty nice job because your life usually isn't at risk by doing it so um it is definitely a luxury i think um in comparison to some of the stuff i've worked on to get to do this stuff um, and yeah, yeah. So like but again none of us have the same path to how we started and I think that'll be good for anyone that's watching this as well to realize that am I doing this right am I taking the right steps probably 
is the answer because you'll you'll get there eventually once you keep working towards it. Niall, people want to know what's under your hat. Uh, I shaved my head. I had a Britney Spears moment. Okay. Did you actually? <laughs> no, of course oh. not. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> my hair was super long uh yeah i had to do mine yesterday it's like yeah you see yeah you you shaved, like you very hit the bullet so. my yeah mine uh yeah so my mine's just getting super long i i had two pigtails in my hair the other day so like that's how long it's getting you know for me so well, pretty long i mean mine comes down to like here anyway so i mean yes similar <laughs> for sure uh <laughs> The, Ed, Ed is the happy medium, like he's between. Yeah, us, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be <laughs> perfect. You know how jo- is. John is the only pro- <laughs> professional looking of us. The rest of us, because I see poor John get, get, getting abused in the chat for not having a beard as well. Well, uh, we're in a rock band. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> I saw that, and I actually just shaved yesterday. Anyway, it, was, it, was, it's not, it was not real long, but it's you can tell there's some scruff on there. We're the rock yeah. band. Yeah. John's the manager. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. John's the one no, raking actually... it in, and we're just on the stage looking like... We'll hold the money. He, he's, the, <laughs> yeah, he's the responsible one out of us. That's the yeah. easiest way of putting it. I guess um, it's actually good to have someone who people can't take seriously. So, you know, it's definitely good to have someone. <laughs> exactly. Um, the, there's, one, there's something I was just uh, watching a lot of threads about, and I see all the time on Twitter and that, and even in blog posts and articles, and you see it. I'm sure you've come across it, even when you're always, when we're starting. We've all made that excuse to not start. And that's how important do you think the hardware is when you're starting out? You know the way a lot of people think they need the MacBook, they need the, the, the fancy laptop to start? Like... What do you think the bare minimum is for somebody to start web development and, you know, learn it properly? And please, anyone jump in here. I'm not going to go in any turns here. So <laughs> shout over each other, fight. I'm near my second beer, true. So it's going to start getting a little bit more rowdy from here on out. Okay. That's, so- a, that's, a, tough, that's a tough one, I think. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I'd, I'd like to say, well, I think, well, hardware is pretty good these days from what i can tell but i'm probably not the best person to ask so like the first firm i worked for it was like here's a macbook and um you know it was great and i was a convert from then so <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. i always find that to just be the best to work on for me um but i had i did all through college i, I worked on windows or linux machines and it was fine so but yeah i just this is what I'm used to, so I'm probably not the best person to ask. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, uh, yeah, I actually have a bit of an experience here. So uh, when I started uh, learning development, like, you know, when I was still in the boot camp, uh, I did not have a laptop or a computer or, you know, anything of that sort. And uh, although I had a really good, uh, you know, housemate and, like, a really good friend, uh, he actually lent me his laptop, and it was, you know, uh, like a two gig RAM, really old uh, Sony laptop, but it, you know, it would just do the job. Uh, at the time, all that I really had to run was Notepad++ because that's what I was using to really learn. And uh, that's what I started off with. And uh, I actually landed my job, you know, using that computer. And again, I would stay back in the boot camp, you know, and just to study and, you know, just to use their computer. And that was pretty good. It's actually now that, you know, uh, like maybe what, seven years out into the job, I've actually bought my first computer. And up until now I've been using, you know, like, absolutely whatever i get so uh yeah i mean to you know to summarize like just start with absolutely whatever you get you know uh, even if it's you know even if you just want to start with notepad plus plus as far as you can you know write something as far as you can run whatever you're writing you know that's that's enough you don't really need anything fancy uh absolutely i i know i started on a second hand laptop i'll get to that in a second just so, so dennis you can prepare your answer on this as well welcome to the chaos already what's up um, everyone I hope you have a beer as well with you. Uh, I'm going to have to get it right now. What are we drinking? Uh, Hard Tesh liquor or just Guinness? beer, right? I'm on, I'm on beers at the moment so because uh, it could get derailed very fast if I go on to the hard liquor. But, like, I, I guess I'm hosting, so please feel free to go nuts. I, I You know, if the if it doesn't get banned after this, I don't think we've done a good job. Sounds good. <laughs> it's, uh, it's 1 p.m. on a Friday, but uh, I guess it's Florida, so anything goes. <laughs> exactly. Yep. I'm expecting a gator, a gator through the window now, any second, and that's yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, I think 1pm on a Friday is it's a bit too late already, isn't it? <laughs> 1pm, oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay, oh, I got my beer. Ah, oh, there you go. Excellent. Okay, and... Uh, do I get paid for this to promote? Uh, no, I don't to, think you so. You have to pay to promote it. That's nice. Oh, I see. <laughs> you never pay for it. I mean, if yeah. anything, you know, all of us can will just get sued at best. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, what's yeah. The big deal we do not want your yeah, exactly. we do not want your faces associated with our brand. <laughs> 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 That's what I'm expecting to happen. Uh, <laughs> I was just taking John, a walk, so I caught a little bit of the stream. So I've been listening. Just got from outside. Nice. So, yeah, great. Uh, John, it... you you might as well jump in and see what you think uh, is uh, what if you think hardware is important. I guess to I suppose start programming as well. Uh, well, for for web dev, I don't I don't think you need too much. I mean, I will go as far as to say if if you have some money, a Chromebook would probably be okay. Uh, if you don't, uh, it might be hard during the pandemic, but go to your local library. Use the, use the computers there. Uh, you can probably use stuff like Dropbox to host your files. Uh, you know, the GitHub Spaces is, I hear, is pretty good. So there's, I, I think there's ways to work around the hardware bit. Yeah, absolutely. And Dennis, what do you think on the hardware side of things? Is it how important is a good machine for just getting started because I, I feel personally that it's like an excuse to not start a lot of a lot of times with people. Yeah, I don't think it's important at all. I, I know nothing about hardware. Like I had a I had this like I don't know how old the computer was, this piece of junk laptop and I coded with that for the first like three years of my life. Um yeah, like it never had an impact on me for coding specifically unless you're like boosting up your own server and trying to build something out. Uh, anything that pretty much gets a text editor, uh, you know, you can get your text editor working. Anything like that was fine for me. Yeah, like like I uh, I have my brother in law still help me with that kind of stuff. Like I don't know anything. Like people ask me what kind of computer I have, I have no idea. Like I'm that bad with it. Uh, I just kind of have, I get assistance with that kind of stuff. But I know that the f the first computer I used wasn't any good. Um, yeah, and that's like I guess it depends what you're doing. But as far as like what we do, for the most part, I think we're all software. You know. Web developers, software engineers, it doesn't really have an impact. I mean, I'm sure there's um, shitty hardware that can really ruin your day, but that's like an extreme the other way. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I see somebody, I, I love this comment in fairness. Uh, you just need something that can run Chrome, so at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. brave, because supposedly it's, you know, it's Chromium, but it doesn't use up all the RAM from what I've heard. Yeah. No, that's that's actually right. I I use uh, Brave because you know I just have a thirty ninety and fifty nine fifty, so I can't really afford anything more than that. <laughs> <laughs> you just got the <laughs> GPU by itself, is it? Exactly. Yeah. This is sitting on your desk as a, yeah. a mounted going. Someday yeah, exactly. I'll have a computer to put this into. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> with an RMA label on it. Come on, we've played with Tej at the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. In See, what fairness, you, uh, <laughs> what you guys are saying is going way over my head right now. Like I'm, I'm that ignorant to that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, Tej uh, recently just bought like the best uh, graphics card on the market, basically, or so he says. He because took a we're, out yeah, like you'd need to. It's just totally ridiculous. But the the reason we're slagging him is because we play like a game that needs maybe medium quality graphics. And his is the machine that is always lagging when we're playing. So it's just, <laughs> so just, just, just laughing at him at his poor expense because we don't have those uh, graphics cards. <laughs> um, excellent. Yeah. So um, then kind of this is uh, something that's always t sometimes tough too. So like if you don't want to talk about it, it's fine. Um, I know, Dennis, uh, there's a story I'm thinking of straight away when I'm talking about this, but uh, the biggest mistakes in your career and how you overcame it. I, at some point, we have to get to your church uh, story as well, Dennis, because I I was in ribbons and tears when you were telling me that story. Uh, hey, that recently. wasn't my mistake. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> it wasn't my mistake. That just that's just something that happened. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, well, I'll, we'll fit that into another segment of what. Don't don't let your so server be vulnerable on church yeah. sites then. <laughs> Oh, yes, you need to be good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so who wants to jump in here? So what, 
yeah, what what mistakes have you made in your career? I know I've made plenty. Um, if, probably too long for the stream. If we want to go technical, so I got my uh, I got my start being a solo developer. Like for anybody that doesn't know the story, I built out this platform at my company. I wasn't even a software developer, or I guess a web developer, whatever you call it. Um, I, I I knew HTML, CSS. I built out WordPress websites, but I got this position to code up this application. And I think some of the the worst things that I did there was uh, first thing is I kept my application in a, in debug mode, even in production. Like I didn't understand what the difference was. I just learned. So anytime our clients went to the wrong uh, URL, they just went to the wrong page, they would get to see all the errors. So any hacker uh, could have just got into the application. Another one was I left my, uh, I didn't put my secret keys inside of environment variables. So I had my Amazon account hacked for, I think they spent like $6,000 using my, my uh, user account. Yeah, somehow we were actually able to get it back, which Amazon usually doesn't do, because if you got hacked, that's your fault. But they used my uh, user account basically because I had you know the secret key and everything all access, basically what you would need to even access my Amazon account. I pushed it up to GitHub, no environment variables, and that got hacked. And uh, <sighs> yeah, those were probably like two of the, the dumbest things that I did, but that was like four months into just learning how to really code and being thrown into a position where like I'm the one managing the site and we have, I don't know, like hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of clients that are on this site using it. And I was nowhere near ready. I should, like I was way out of my, my league there at that moment. And how, how is your secret keeping skills now? That's a, that's a very interesting one because that's something that we kind of take for granted until something bad happens. Cause you just assume it's fine. Who is going to care about my key, my random site? Uh, mm -hmm. nothing's going to happen um, because I know that's what I did when I started, especially because I was doing front end development. I was like, throw it all in. It's fine. Yeah. Well, uh, but a, a bill yeah. like that is definitely going to scare you. Yeah. I mean, now the solution is just putting it in environment variables. Like, like I pushed my code to GitHub with my AWS password from my database. Um, every single password username, like if you wanted to hack my AWS account, you just go into my GitHub repo. If you can get that, you have everything that I, I ever, you know, put up on that site. So yeah, just environment variables. That's really the solution right now. It's outside of just trying to keep my site secure. Well, nice. Yeah. Luckily now GitHub will send you an email if they. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do they? That's, that's interesting. Yeah. I haven't, I'm glad I have not seen that message. Yeah, I've gotten <laughs> a couple from, I, I use mostly Azure. So sometimes I'll, for my demo apps, I'll accidentally hard code them in there and I'll get a email, but that just tells me I need to delete the resource. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that one all the time. Like in a demo application for a tutorial, like I'll get like secret key is exposed or something like that. Cause GitHub can read that. They look for certain variable names and so on. And if it looks like it's something that should be private, that's definitely a good thing to let you know. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It's a thing there was a Still. time well when like you couldn't have private repos for like free. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. I bought, yeah. I bought my uh, private repos like two weeks before they decided to make yeah. those things free for people. And it, it drove me mental. I was like, why didn't they warn me when I was putting in my card details? <laughs> <laughs> so actually talking about the, you know, the secrets and how you really maintain them, uh, we kind of just follow the principle of, you know, the least privilege. So uh, for example, you know, developers don't really need access to, let's say, the database in the CI environment. Like, you know, uh, for example, by uh, team and the backend developers, uh, we can just basically have our own local environment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fancy looking drink. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I really like the label on this beer. Not to derail you, Tej. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, speaking of which, is it loud yeah. when I drink? Like, I'm trying to drink and not make weird sounds here. Like, after you Talk to my beer. <laughs> it's a safe place. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> If it was a professional oper operation, Dennis, you might have to worry. But I'm after spilling beer all over my keyboard, so. <laughs> <laughs> Can't take you anywhere now. So at least, uh, access oh, yeah. at the, least. The least privileged uh, principle. So for example, you know, uh, as backend developers, you know, you would have your own database and, you know, on your local environment, you, you would have everything. So uh, you don't need access to anything like, uh, you know, let's say the CI database or, you know, the non-broad database. Uh, if you do, you know, you again start with, you know, what table do you need access to or what schema do you need access to? And you create users only for that. So let's say worst case scenario, you know, your uh, developers end up pushing code uh, with 
you know, the database credentials in there. Even if somebody tries to, you know, get uh, something off your database, they, you know, first of all, they get test data. Uh, second, uh, you know, like ideally, they should not be able to enter your database anyway, because it should ideally be behind like a VPN or a firewall. So they would first have to, you know, enter your VPN or your network and then enter your database. So, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, like the different levels of, uh, you know, security that you put in place, you know, uh, first at the network level and second, you know, just the best practices that you can follow and keep a very close eye on that, really. Nice. Um, interesting. Yeah, so like, uh, and that's why when I was working with Utej, you'd never give me access to anything. Exactly. Because you knew I was just going to, <laughs> you knew I was just going to ruin it. <laughs> yeah. It was mostly like, yeah, you I sit here, tell me what you want to do. <laughs> I'll do it with yeah. you. It's okay. <laughs> it's, you know, like when uh, somebody has the controller plugged out, um, and you oh, think yeah. you're doing the work. That's what it was. Yeah. It was like playing with your little brother where you're like, yeah, you're playing too, you know, and not playing at all. <laughs> yeah, that service is up and running. You did it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about you, Jay? Any uh, Anything uh, major that you've made as a mistake in when you're learning this or nothing that's scared you? No, I can't think of anything which sounds really cop out, but I can't actually think of anything like major. Probably because like, I guess on the front end, like you, most things get some kind of review and there's nothing too critical. Like I, like throughout the start of my career, like I wouldn't have had access to like these keys that were going to break things and stuff. So um, yeah, I can't think of anything major. Yeah. So boring. So boring. <laughs> no, uh, that's all right. Um, I don't know. Like I'm just thinking back to like, my first lead role um, when I was in charge of like architecting apps and building out apps, I know the biggest mistake I made was not putting in any analytics tools or like uh, error catching tools. So what I didn't realize when we launched a new app is we thought it was going perfectly. It wasn't until we tried it ourselves two days later that we realized that there was an error on the first page and it was redirecting back to the app or a normal part of the app. And we just we just assumed because nobody complained that it was fine. Um, it wasn't until like the a project manager actually tested themselves because when a customer said they couldn't see the feature after us asking how they have been finding the feature, um, so they were like, "Yeah, we can't see anything." I was like, "Oh, okay. So we need something in here to catch if something doesn't work uh, in production." But yeah, that was a I've learned now to put in something like AirBrake or. Sentry or that to make sure that you don't have those kind of weird silent errors, or at least that you get metrics on the pages that are being hit. So the things you think that are being hit are actually touched in the app because that was embarrassing. And I got a nice slap on the hand for that one. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I don't know. My memory is not great. So I probably just can't remember anything substantial. But yeah, I'm struggling to think of anything crazy. Um, there's a good question in chat. I don't know if it got lost, but there's one about how did everyone build their portfolios? I guess I mean like personal sites. I don't know what you wanted to talk about next, but I thought that was quite a good one because obviously Ted has just built his. And uh... Yeah, go for it. I've just built mine as well, so I think you go ahead. Who wants to go? Uh, take, take the lead, Jay. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah. You started I mean, it. You started it. Yeah, exactly, you started it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm about to rebuild mine again, so. Um... Oh, it's like two months old. <laughs> yeah, but. You know, it was just an experiment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what we good... all say in college. That's all what we all say in college. I think it's a, I think it's a good one, though. Because um, I don't know. Let me find the question again. It just said, uh, how did you approach building your port? So, you know, because I spoke mm. with you about mine, I wanted to, this time when I rebuilt, I wanted to rebuild it and try out um, Eleventy. And I wanted to do stuff from scratch to like appreciate. So I'm rebuilding it in Next now because I have some other stuff in Next. And I just wanted to like do a bare bones thing to appreciate how much the frameworks give you, um, which is a lot, um, <laughs> which we don't really notice. Yeah. So yeah, I did like all the image optimization myself and stuff like that. Um, so like converting images and doing all the OG cards and having a CMS. In, like I think I used, I used Netlify CMS for it. I wrote it all with Pug and did all the templating and stuff and did all the critical style loading and things all myself. Um, well, I guess the the question being like, what was your approach? Like what when you were starting that, was there like a plan you had before you started? Because 
I, I guess you're kind of just for somebody that's new, you might be overcomplicated yeah. talking about all just the toys that go into these things rather than like that's why you did it. Because I, I know the reason you started it. We talked about it, and it's what made me build my one was. Um, we had articles spread all over the internet. Yeah, I guess, um, I guess from a high level, yeah. And that's probably more useful to speak about. Um, yeah, just trying to get more stuff on my actual domain. Um, but it's an absolute mess because what I've done is, because I have too much stuff all over the place, now my site is just full of stuff and it's not very con it's not very clear um, where to go. That's why I'm redoing it again already. Um, <laughs> because it's just not like clear where to go or what I'm doing. So, but yeah, having everything like all your own content, all your own writing, all your own sort of stuff on one domain is kind yeah. of like just to point people. To be fair, like the the best thing I have is just a, a page with links to everywhere I am. Like that's the best thing to just direct people. Um, and that's a paid service. We were talking about that. Linktree is a service like that. You just pay like X amount per month just to have your links on one page. Um, and I was go I was going to get that, and you're like, just put a page up with links and i was like oh yeah i'm a web developer i can do that well, it's like <laughs> completely a few seconds right you just literally write a markdown but like, i think i think the way i did mine is i just wrote a markdown file and then just dropped a load of links and the way i architected my site is like if in the cms you can just put like a class name in the cms and it wraps the page in a class name and then uh, i just said right every link under here turn it into like a fancy looking button that you can go and click so I just list everything, nothing like fancy. It'd just be like ebook, Twitch. <laughs> nice. I actually like your portfolio site. I'm looking at it now. Like you're saying it's all over the place, but I'm following. Like I can see what you're about. I can see all the stuff you're working on social platforms. Don't you think every, everyone's their own worst critic, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, 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 he's just beating himself up for no reason. Have you, have you seen Matthew Cutts? Uh, website you know who that is the he used to be the lead like for search engine optimization at google he's like this like you know big time dude at google and if you look at his site it's just a, a paragraph of text and his face but there's no css on his website it's pretty <laughs> hilarious so like if you're talking about personal websites here yeah i think that, yeah i kind of like I'm that approach at... i said oh this is site. matt cuts gadgets google and seo is this his site yeah, you want to share it? Let me. It's it's just yeah. matt mattcuts.com. So M A T T C U T T S. Let me see com. if I can share this. Just so this uh, is like the lead, like, or he used to be the lead at Google. Like, he's a big time player. So go go back a little bit. Just go to the main domain. That's not the. That's like a blog on his so, website. Okay, let me. Can you can you just change it in the browser? Just go uh, to mattcuts.com. Oh, so, excellent! Look at this. Yeah. I don't know why. I kind of like that approach sometimes. Like, like that's, yeah, that's the first the first portfolio site I ever put up or website. Yeah. I kind of kept it that style with a little bit of CSS, but it's, I don't know. Uh, it's minimal. And, minimalist. Uh, and you know, like if you do that as a decision, like well, you, know, he, you know, he can do that. I mean, if you're if you're a beginner, you probably should try to build out something nice. But this is Matt cuts. Like he doesn't give a damn. I mean, yeah, so. I'd be very, very bold as a beginner if you yeah. went in and said, here's my portfolio. <laughs> what do you mean I need CSS? We said this before, Niall. I don't know if we said it on a stream or when we've been chatting, but like the most important thing is to get something deployed. So like, you, even if you did that, you just work on it. But at least there's something there on your domain. Yeah. Because like, yeah. the thing is, when you go really far and then you start adding bells and whistles, like half the time people don't even notice them. Um, so like on my site, uh, it got reviewed by uh, Scott and Wes on Syntax. And they picked up on some of the things, but like they, they missed, they missed like, so for example, you know, you click the head as soon as you, um, as soon as you check my site. But uh, I know, like, I know your game. I know your game straight away though, because that. I know everything is clickable. Yeah. So like, oh, sure. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. People are, yeah. There's little all, things like, everywhere. The yeah. squeaky, the squeaky uh, buttons, people, don't see them or don't even notice that you can like uh, slide the testimonials and things like people just don't notice that. So it's yeah, like, that's why I want to make those things obvious. Um. <laughs> what about what if you have like a almost like what do you call those? Um, like on Google Maps, what are those markers or not markers, but like tabs the kids. Or, yeah, what if you like did little things like that? Because I, I like what you're going for. Like my big thing was uh, your site is supposed to impress right away. So even in, outside of like your work itself, if you're a beginner or somebody that's newer and trying to 
show something off, like your site is your opportunity to do this. Like mm -hmm. right now, uh, I can already see that. Like, assuming you built this yourself, I'm, I'm assuming you're not building yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that's <laughs> not I even like, a lot, but, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sliding feature, you're showcasing your skills right there. Like I love that idea because you're, instead of telling your employer what you can do, you're showing them immediately. Like these are the skills that I have. So that whole head effect right there, that's something that you have to know how to code up. That sliding effect too. I like that. Yeah, yeah nice. I actually uh, love your website. Like, you know, uh, we've spoken about like, we really had to, you know, go and find a flaw. And that's what I was doing with your website. And I was like, okay, maybe there's too much con, you know, a lot of text there. But like, again, then I did my website and I, you know, just took all the bad, you know, everything. The only thing that I told you is not great. I took that and I just doubled that. I have twice the content on my website now. <laughs> so, but yeah, like, I mean, this is, I, I look at this and I think this is flawless. Like, I love it. I absolutely love it. And look at that cute face. Yeah. <laughs> Scroll down. Yeah, this is like, you have like a service worker in place here. This isn't even yeah. my actual site, is it? No. <laughs> no. You need to do like a hard refresh or something. Oh, hold on. Yeah. There we go. But oh, I have yeah. seen your other one. But oh, it must be a different browser I'm on. Yeah. Uh, never mind. But there, this is way better. You have a quote on here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I do. Where is my quote? There, there we go. go. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Jay often comes to unstuck me on stream. So uh, I have said that quite a few times. <laughs> But to be honest, I don't think it does not get any more honest than this. Like that is so true. Like that that's exactly what happens. Yeah, this this is awesome. I, I really like this. Um but look again, I if you don't think this is good enough, I would just say, of course it's terrible. Just to see what crazy things you come up with in an improvement of this. To I would always honest. appreciate a push. <laughs> yeah. You can do better, Jay. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> No, excellent stuff in fairness. Yeah, this um, is great. I'm going through the projects right now. Oh, that needs that's updating. That definitely needs updating. There's that's the thing, that's the thing I kind of find like I like build when you build something out, then you think I just want to show everything. But then like it's updating it and remembering to update it. And that's like that's why CMSs are invaluable, right? But it's like yeah. remembering it. Like you get so um into creating the content that it's like now you go out day everywhere where it's listed. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going through that right now because I just launched my own site. Um, yeah, but but yeah, that, bring your site up. It's really I like yours. If you I'm surprised I actually it. got it. I, I'm surprised I got mine done to be honest because uh, I just tend to. I want to see everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, put in your URLs in the into the private chat or into the chat. I don't know if URLs will go into YouTube chat. Um, when, I when I when I try. Yeah. <laughs> so Jay, how are you hosting your blog here? I'm looking at your articles. So I have it on, uh, everything's on Netlify, but I have like a, I build it. I build it all from the command line because the build process takes so long. So I actually want to get rid of the images because every blog, so every blog post has like a header image mm -hmm. and I do a thing with, um, so I have a thing where I generate all my open graph images with puppeteer. And then I use sharp. So my open graph images are like a bare head with uh, the shades, but then I reflect the hero image from the blog post in the bare shade for every open graph image. So it looks like, so every open graph image is individual, but um, yeah, it's a bit like every build time requires like pulling down puppeteer and then running it all. So every build is like, four minutes or so. <laughs> so so i tend to build it locally and just shoot off the deploy myself um hmm. yeah that's how it is i want to change it though i want to move like to something like story block or um a different cms and use next i i started building out a next portfolio starter kit for like people that uses the stack that i use so like i so my site i build it all with like storybook and stuff like that and then um i push it up so like I have like the storybook posted somewhere. I don't think I do for this site though. I did for the old version, but I try and make it just so I can take everything and just swap the front. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think I did a little bit of an overkill with mine. I built out my own rich text editor. Like it's all hand coded. Oh wow! And then like nice. the yeah, <laughs> like I used a gosh, what was it? 
I don't know. I don't, it's, is it called a whiskey or WS or yeah, uh, yeah WYSIWYG. 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 Yeah, there we go. So I used like there was like a, it is a library and a, there's something that you can use with Django because that's what mine's built in. But oh, no. I did a I'm about to do a full tutorial on it and it might be an overkill because I wouldn't recommend you custom build out your website. But that yeah, was kind of that was the most interesting part to do that. I, um, nice. I use like Netlify CMS and a lot of people like for my site at the moment, I'm using Netlify CMS, which is like a, uh, if anyone that hasn't used it, it's like a Git based like Git gateway. So all it is is like a front end. But what happens is when you push like that just generates markdown or JSON files in your repo. So it's like doing commits for you. So it's quite, it's quite nice to work on locally because you can just pass a key. There's a little trick to doing it and you can work on it local. But the cool thing about Netlify is you can really customize it, but I just I just haven't like I just work on it direct. So you see people make all these really cool like React components for doing CMS things like the WYSIWYG side of it, but nice. I just pass through strings of like MDX and then um, have it work. But obviously I'm not using MDX at the moment because I'm using Eleven C. So for my next uh, portfolio kit, it does MDX, which is quite quite fun. But yeah, I've not really got into CMS. Um, Customization. I'd be really interested. I, I, to be fair, I'd just like to see the Wizzy we get it. Or it'd be pretty cool to see what. You nice. Got. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that's always cool. And John, do you have a personal site? Because I know, like myself, this is my first personal site I've had in about four years, because I was so bad at keeping updated and kind of like Jay, where I was just embarrassed of it within a month. So <laughs> I just wanted to get rid of it really quickly. Um, did you uh, build one for yourself yet, or? Uh, so, as Dennis said, he. He went overkill on his. I pretty much did the opposite. I'll probably get some flag for this, but I use Squarespace. <laughs> nice. Uh, it's I, a you know portfolio what? site. Why not? Yeah, it makes it makes total sense. I see that for people. You see it with like sort of uh, Emma Bastian as well for her book launches and things like that. Has anyone used Webflow? Like I've not actually ever like, but people make sites in that that look. I've heard great things about <laughs> Webflow because there's so many good integrations. Yeah, um, yeah I've, I've heard wonderful things about it. Um, same as like Shopify and things. You can do so much stuff now without even touching an editor. Like if I'm making an e-commerce site tomorrow, I'll probably just pick Shopify because why would I go through the effort of trying to do something better than them at which there are millions and millions of manpower in yeah. there to do it all? Yeah, what John said, like, like I'm 100% for that. Like, I did it just because I wanted to, and I was curious. Like, to me, uh, it was more based on a tutorial that I want to put out. Still, it's to build like a medium type of website. So, I want to build out something where people can sign up, write posts. Not because this is a project, but this is like a tutorial I want to make. So, just because I'm teaching it, I just figured I'd build it that way. But I, I would, I would recommend Wix, even if you like, like I'm, I'm totally on that train. Where why build it yourself when you have other things to focus on? It just happened yeah. to be where my attention was. Yeah, I just, it's good if you're using it as like a as a talking point, right? If you don't have other projects, like this could be. Your yeah, project. yeah. So like, yeah, it works. Then it's really good in that sense. But yeah, I totally agree. Like, it's one of them trade offs. Like, I'm just curious because I want to be able to build something very particular. But realistically, if I just wanted to show off what I do, like, why not use like a Webflow or Wix, like? Cause it's just links and static content that I just want to show something. So why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me, it was a, I wanted to start writing blog posts though. That was the other side. And I wanted to build out like my own ad bar because I do have my own products that I want to push out like my own courses and so on. So in this case, like if you happen to take a look at it, you'll see that like I, I'm promoting my ads or my own course, I'm promoting floor and pops book with an affiliate link. So I get sales all the time just from a blog post. Like I'll make a YouTube video. And then I'll say there's a blog that goes with this. And a lot of people do go check that out. And I'm tracking all those link clicks. So to, just to have that full ability to customize that, that's like my favorite part. That's smart. This is the yeah. clever way of doing yeah. it, Niall. This yeah. Is yeah. Cool down. You want to pull it up real quick now? It's just DennisIvy.com. And you can go to one of the yeah. blogs. I just wanted to show that example. I can post it in the comment section. Yeah, yeah. Check uh, let me yeah, put this up. And so if you click on one of the articles, that's like, oh, look at this handsome fellows. Here's what I can personalize the team. You've no purple, you're out. Oh, so you that do was... have a purple, you're okay. Oh, yeah, I thought you didn't have any purple. That was uh, for floor and pop, so I want to make sure to give him something. <laughs> but if you check out one of those articles, I like click on one of those, that sidebar, and I think you have to click, yeah, you have to press on that. So that's right, yeah, that's pretty good. I love this little like Mac style. 
Yeah, that's editor cool. here. That's pretty slick. I like that. So that color theme goes away when you go to like a another page outside of the home page. That's just a one page feature. Nice. And then this always this is tracking your clicks and whatever through your referral. Yeah. So and- I know exactly what blog brought those clicks. So I basically have like in the database, I have a model for my ads. And I'm still working on uh, making that rotate when I have more ads to the type of content you're reading. So I'm still trying to track user information. So if if you're like on a blog that's related to Python, I want to show you Python related ads. If you're talking about WordPress, because I do have blogs or I have one article about WordPress, I want to show you like a WordPress theme or whatever I'm marketing. So I'm trying to build in user tracking so I can understand who's there and give them the most personalized ads. Yeah, that's very cool. That's pretty cool. That's yeah. smart. That's very smart. Good. That's uh, that's exactly what professionals do, Jay. Um, uh, like, <laughs> like, here, here we are, like not making money, like chumps. Yeah, like, like, um, like the toy shop, and then this is like where you actually go to buy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. That's very cool. I like that idea. Well, I'm definitely going to start playing with that to try to steal it. It's another way to bring money though. Like mm. if we if we bring traffic, like people will monetize with Google ads, right? Like you're gonna make half a cent per viewer, way less than that even. It's ridiculously low. But if I if I put that up and I'm making let's say fifteen dollars a course on a sale, that's it just in pure like how many people visit to what they're buying is way more worth it for me to do that than to put up um, Google AdWords or Google AdSense. Like it it just Make, it brings in way more money because I've done AdSense and I think I made like several dollars a month and that was bull crap like that. It was not worth it. You have to bring in insane traffic to make anything with it. At least that's been my experience. I can yeah. totally, yeah, totally see that as well because I, I mean, I don't have the array of products, but I had like one <laughs> product, like a ebook that I made last year. And when, as soon as I put an actual link to it somewhere on my site, that's easy to find. Like I linked it in my header on uh, my bio and that like, I the the sales filter in now and I you know I've not pushed it but just yeah I have links somewhere like on my on my own domain like it's made a difference so actually pushing it is like nice it doesn't have to be your own products like I have an affiliate link somebody reached out to me because I do a lot of Django content and uh, I forgot his name but he wrote two scoops Django for anybody that knows that so I'm gonna read the book because I'm not gonna push a product that I don't believe in myself <laughs> so I'm gonna have to read it check it out but I'm making fifteen dollars a sale on that too. And Way more ethical than me. I'd be like, "What is this?" Yes, of course, <laughs> everyone have it. <laughs> What's the commission? <laughs> yeah, you mean I get paid in six months? There's just pop up, spinning yeah. things, marquees everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I have to say that will be a fun project for you, Jay, to see how you could make the most annoying site with no JavaScript. Oh, it's it's doable. Don't worry no. about that. <laughs> By the way, nice. Neil, when I drink, the first thing that goes is my my tongue. So. If I start slurring even after one beer, I'm still sober. It's just, you know, my, my tongue all. for some reason goes. I have you to like enunciate my words. What's up? It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it happens to me all the time. So it's, it's, it's natural. It, it, it'd, be, it'd be unexpected if this stayed on track and everyone could speak by the end of it. So, uh, yeah. Well, I, I see sure. no one drinking. I feel alone here. No, uh, we, I have. John's I, drinking have freaking water over there. I, no, oh, I, I like uh, that. He has beers. I, I'm oh. here. I'm. Uh, I'm going on. Uh, I'm a few beers in here already. I started um, during work uh, a few hours ago during a meeting, so um, we, we we've been continuing on since then. <laughs> um, How about you, Jay? Are you drinking anything? Uh, I, I don't. Well, I don't. But you know, that's as oh, far I see, as it goes for me. <laughs> The hefty stuff. Yeah. Well, then you'll be our moderator then when Neil yeah, that's, kind that's of loses it. Yeah, that's why I'm here. Yeah. Keep us on track. Exactly. <laughs> no, for sure. Um, the, I, and because I think we're after rambling about um, probably that one portfolio question for <laughs> probably about 20 <laughs> minutes, I think. That's, what, that's <laughs> what this is about, though, right? This it is, is uh, absolutely. Uh, but, like, I have, a, I have another uh, question um, that will definitely start more arguments in the chat and everything else because it's something that even when I was on your stream, Dennis, and that, and I see it on everyone's all the time. What is the best programming language? What should they learn? Because yeah. that's what everyone wants to know. You What's saw my best? tweet. 
Uh, did you put one out recently? I, I, I said I said three best programming languages, and they're not up for debate. It's a uh, PHP, yeah, HTML, you know, and WordPress. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. Yeah, so yeah. I put WordPress yeah, yeah, because I figured if anyone's actually confused and thinks I'm serious, I figured that would be like the one thing people would understand. No, that like <laughs> there was people killing each other in the comment section. I, was, I just yeah. I, I took it down because I was more worried about beginners getting confused and then going into a conversation and saying, well, WordPress is one of the best programming languages out there. Like, that's what I was concerned about. Not the people killing themselves be- or <laughs> killing each other because you guys, like, like people get into that fight. I don't give it like, I'll never get involved in that. But yeah, though, that's my take right there. Those three. Anyone else want to come in and start to fire or light the fire? Um, so I, 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 we'll give some serious answers after we light the fire, but like, I, I'd rather like I at least. I don't think I don't think there is a uh, you know the best programming language out there. Other yet. than JavaScript, other than JavaScript. Oh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> because you know, like we still have to do so much stuff by ourselves. Like a lot of boilerplate stuff that we do. You know, we still have to write so much code. You know, if there was you know a really good programming language out there, you know, we would not really have to write all the boilerplate that we do right now. So, and again, you know, like uh, you know, it, it's a great argument to have. But uh, again, you know, this is again like a non-solution to a non-problem right like you start with the problem and then you go to the solution like you start with you know what you're trying to solve and then you choose a language it absolutely does not matter what language you code in it it just does not you know unless you know you have restrictions like uh, let's say i work a lot with serverless uh, applications right so if then if i'm trying to you know build something with java the cold start is going to be so high that you know my applications will just time out so i will not choose java there i'll choose something like python but again you know see i'm kind of dependent on the technology that i'm using and you know, I'm starting from okay. I want to make the serverless. So what do you know? Like I'm, I'm keeping one thing constant, right? Now again, like if I move to something like microservices, I'll probably go with you know Java and uh, you know Spring Boot and you know just use the Netflix library and you know get everything, uh, yeah, get everything ready made. And you know, like those are some proven patterns used by Netflix. So I'll go down that road. So yeah, but, again, you know, like it all, it's also <laughs> it's, it, it's also what you're building. Like John, you you do like F sharp, which I've I didn't realize it was even a language until I had seen it on your channel and things. Like it's just because I don't do machine learning, so it's not something that I would have come across. But again, like a lot of these languages are solutions to a problem that other languages can't cope with, or uh, like a, yeah. a performance increase for a, a particular reason. Yeah. Um, so like uh, John, like for F sharp, for instance, it is F sharp. I am saying this right, aren't I? Before I, yeah, so yeah I, that's how little I know about this. I was like, is that that is the name of that language? Um, like. What is the performance? Uh, like, why would somebody pick F Sharp for a project, for instance? Uh, well, a couple of things. One, it, it is a .NET language. So if there is a C Sharp package that you want to use, you can just download the package and use that within F Sharp. Uh, so you have that flexibility there. But also, F Sharp is it's a pretty sh- strongly typed language. and at first, you won't be annoyed by it, but then as you go with it, as you realize it's going to help you out. It's going to help you find those bugs during compile time. I remember a couple of years ago, this guy on Twitter, he, he said, yeah, I, I wrote this financial app in F Sharp. Just put it out in production. Hope nothing goes wrong. And I think, I think it was about a year after that or so, he said, yep, I haven't heard any bugs yet. So. Nice. So, so it's like a strong, like it's a. Is it a way of writing better C sharp, basically? Then. Yeah, uh, it's it's functional first. So, ah. but it's, it's hybrid because you you can use C sharp. So they made it hybrid, so you can use the C sharp paradigms with it. Yeah, interesting. Because like again, there there you go. Like, and that just shows you like that's the language you use actively, and I literally was worried I was saying the wrong name. So like that, and that just shows kind of the landscape of languages out there for people as well, that it's not as a, it's not as a easily cut as saying, this is the right way. Um, like if you're in web development, I guess you should probably know some HTML and CSS, and then you should pick whether you want to double down on front end or back end or something else. But then again, like I've, I've met a lot of people that have started with Python because they want to learn some programming for games or just uh, play ver- with some like just have a versatile language to mess with things. So um, it really is, it's it's difficult. It, would anyone say there is a, a right way to learn or a path 
for a new web developer if they had no idea of what to learn at all? I have a recommendation. Like if, if it's for a web developer, so you mentioned HTML and CSS. Well, not languages, but yeah, it's something you should learn. Um, I recommended it, even though I'm a Python guy. I know I'm trying. I'm. I'm it's, it's, the in bear your, here. it's in your tweet. It's HTML is the best programming yeah. language. You said it yourself. So I, I, even though I'm a, even though I'm a Python guy, uh, if I was to recommend somebody who's just starting out and like they want to be a web developer, uh, it would be JavaScript. And the reason why I mentioned that is because it's something that you're going to have to learn at some point, anyways. Like it's pretty hard to be a web developer without knowing it if you're trying to get into the full stack. Uh, at some point, you're going to need to know JavaScript. So it has the backend language. So you're not having to just switch up your syntax. The reason why I started with Python was because I was more into the data science aspect of things. And I really liked it for the financial um, financial markets and doing stuff like that. So in doing research, and it just happens to be that it has a great framework for web development. But if I was to recommend somebody just starting out, uh, if you're looking for something that's good, probably JavaScript. But uh, if you're looking for a lot of job opportunities, PHP, even though a lot of people rag on that too, is just something that even, is the web. They were saying that 70% of the web is still made up of PHP, right? Is that because of WordPress or is that inaccurate? Stat? Yeah. Maybe I heard that like three years ago. A lot of so, WordPress. Yes. Yeah. So it depends on your definition of what is a good language. It, how do you, how do you define that? Is it by jobs? Is it by use case? Cause in that case, like PHP wins out in a lot of areas. Is it by what it can do and its capabilities? So in that sense, yeah, like that's why I don't like the argument. It's really silly. Like, yeah, yeah. how do you, you define also, what a good programming language is? Yeah. Google what's local. Like, yeah, exactly. a lot of people forget that because yeah. depending on where you are, like if you're in a major city, you'll probably have the like trendy popular languages. But if you're not in the city, there is things like uh, PHP um, studios and things pop up all the time because that's how people make money because it's fast to do things, it's tried and tested. But I think a lot of yeah. people uh, before they start true. should definitely just Google it. Like I remember one of the firms I worked in, it was like, um, it was kind of weird. Uh, they had like a Perl middleware and like you're writing JavaScript and like jQuery or Kendo UI. And then it took them ages to like adopt something like um, Angular or React or something like that. But I was going to say exactly what Dennis said, really. It's kind of hard to pick a best, but maybe a hot take is... Uh, don't start with a scripting language, maybe. So instead, Ooh. like, start with object-oriented. Controversial. And then... No, I second that. Yeah, that's, that's, if that's, you start really, with that's like, a very good point. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Here, how do I remove yeah, Tej yeah. from the stream? Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. Okay. There you go. If you, if you that's, start that's, with that's much that, better. That's that argument fixed. <laughs> <laughs> but no, if you start with, like... Um, if you start with something object-oriented, obviously, you don't have to become, like, a professional Java developer or anything, but you kind of learn those paradigms or like those concepts, that kind of mindset. And then you can apply that to other things because you have that kind of mindset already there. So like it kind of, um, so when like JavaScript and front end really started to hook onto components and things, but if you already have like an object oriented kind of background, you kind of were familiar with that, but some people struggle sometimes to grasp those concepts. But like it's already. I think that goes about the fundamentals that we were talking about a little bit earlier yeah, as well. Yeah. Th those Pretty, are things that follow through. I normally don't word these things very well. Someone will come up with a better way to word it. Um, but I know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I, I, I like your approach. Like your definition of it is is going for the fundamentals, and that's that's a good approach too. Like I I see what you're doing. I don't know I if I'll say like Java. I mean. It, you're talking about general development, right? Right, not just yeah. So like, once you grasp those concepts of like, because all of us here would probably be capable of going right. Do you know what this project, this next project you're going to do, it's going to be in this language you've never done before. But because we all know how to approach syntaxes or programs, we kind of understand that like there's going to be conditionals, there's going to be loops, there's going to be ways to define variables, and you just jump in and you'd you'd be able to make something like. Um, without too much trouble because you picked up those like the way to solve problems the way to learn um, yeah after a yeah. while like they all and it sounds really weird but they all kind of look the same so like, yeah kind i of learned going on. i learned no js with a with half a brain drinking so it was just something <laughs> something i wanted to do over the weekend and yeah the second i started going into that it was like oh this all looks okay this is how the function works this is how you're like all the operations are still virtually the same with certain customizations but you're right like once you get the core fundamentals which is the main main part here yeah absolutely um 
Uh, now, Tej, have, have you been okay? Are you going to be good now, Tej, and not not mention <laughs> Java again? Java. <laughs> no. <laughs> For sure. No, it's, no it's, I it's actually think it's... No, I actually agree with Jay that, like, you know, uh, I think, like, I started with, you know, uh, Java first, and then from there on, I found it quite easy to pick up, uh, you know, a second or a third language. And yeah, I totally agree with that. You know, if you start with object-oriented programming, you know, you understand the fundamentals very, very quickly. And, you know, also because, you know, it's the whole paradox of learning, right? Like, the more you learn, uh, you know, the longer you take to learn new things, right? So if you start with object-oriented programming and then move on to scripting, it looks slightly easier, uh, in my opinion. Uh, and then it becomes, you know, much easier to pick up the next language. So, no, I completely agree with that. Yeah, like I, I did Java to start with, like, that was what I was taught. Mm -hmm. And then um, in my third year, I was like, uh, my tutor was like, oh, you should. So I, I made like a social networking app for my final year project. And then he was like, why don't you do it in .NET and C Sharp? And I was like, OK, cool. And I literally just bought a book and was like, yeah, it looks cool. And that's just what I did because I picked up kind of right ifs mm -hmm. that looks good right how do i do a variable how do i do this like how do i make a class or whatever and just you can just apply it to other things so when you go into javascript and it's like how do i do a class and everyone's like yeah that doesn't exist here <laughs> you're like what <laughs> uh john you were about to say something there as well um uh, i'm just gonna put out there that also it, it's okay to experiment with other languages you know <gasps> Oh no! Yeah, you you mean it's not a cult? <laughs> you have to pick Kyle, one. Kyle has a JS tattoo on his uh, arm. It's actually on my. It's on my butt. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted it somewhere more intimate. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a true as well. Well, like when I was starting, um, I learned PHP first because I wanted to be a web designer. And the, the fact, like I was learning where, WordPress and things, so the obvious choice was to learn PHP. And then I seen that I could make APIs and things with Python, so I went there. But then I seen there was lots of jobs with JavaScript in my area, so I ditched the two of them and started learning JavaScript. Um, and since then, I've just been kind of doubling down on JavaScript for different things because it's something I know, and I can do pretty much everything I need to do with it. And for the things I don't, or for the things I can't do, I now know how to pick up other languages. Yeah, so fundamentals. Is that what we're going with on there? That's the, that's the just pick a language, try to learn the fundamentals? Yeah. <laughs> hey, we already talked right. about this, but for me, it was Visual Basic. That's what I started with. I learned what a variable was, an array. And then I, um, I think that was about it, and then I stopped. There was like when I was in school, there was someone that did like all VB and stuff. Like, you know, you get the kid that does all the programming while you're at school. I don't know. We had one. He used to do all the stuff. And I was like, oh, man, that's really cool. Maybe one day. And I think I won like a book token from school and I bought a VB book and I never I never read it. But it's like that's technically the first language I ever looked at was VB, but I never did anything. Oh, it's hideous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you can look at that and still be into, you know, wanting to learn. Like, it, there's no appeal to it. It was because I only went like two pages in and was like, yeah, yeah. that's kind of how I, I so, felt about it. I did some of that and I felt like a superstar because I could write things, you know, and do things and see things. Because like the other way I learned was Dreamweaver, if anyone remembers that stuff, um, yeah. way back when. So, uh, yeah, that was, that's a visual basic. That's something that's a real troll back in fairness. What is built in Visual Basic, like property? So, is there anything built in Visual Basic? I don't know anything mainstream, but I, I know a guy who built out this like warehouse tracking management system where like in the warehouse they would scan boxes and so on. So it kept stock and inventory, but it was all Visual Basic, like a shit code base, but it worked. Uh, it's just somebody locally that I know, but I was I didn't realize you can even go that far with it. Like, nice. Yeah. yeah, that's that's crazy. I wouldn't have thought right. that as well. I've um, seen uh, someone build, uh, I think, a rating engine with uh, Visual Basic too. So, and this was like me six, seven years ago, and at the time as well, the software was probably twenty years old or ten or twenty years old. So, but yeah, I mean, it worked. It did what it had to do. So, so somebody had complain. to have built Doom with it by now as well, because Doom has been built <laughs> in every language by now, isn't it? <laughs> I, don't <know. laughs> I don't know. I've seen Doom on a pregnancy test recently, so like, I'm just thinking you can put, you can run it everywhere, you know. Um, <laughs> Then um, I, to 
a, a few more questions for you. A couple more questions, and I'll release everyone back to the wild. Um, the <laughs> what are the biggest strengths you think, or the best assets to have when being a developer? Now, I know for myself, I just thought being versatile was one of the best things to kind of help me out my career. Was just like not saying like, I guess being cultish about these things and saying I only do this thing. And it's helped me propel my career a lot because I just put my hand up for opportunities. And like that's something I'm a big advocate for is just be versatile and, you know, take on more than you sh probably should and learn with it. Um, does anyone else have anything that they think is a major strength for uh, developers or new developers even? I think... Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, John. Uh, I think kind of along with that is just try to be open-minded. You know, especially if somebody... You get your code reviewed, you know, try to be open minded to what, what they're saying and uh, and to like new paradigms, you know, just like we're going with talking about uh, F sharp, it's, it's different than C sharp because it's functional first. But if you have an open mind and you go to it like that, you might learn some stuff you take from there that you can put back into the C sharp or, or Java or whatever other languages. Yeah, absolutely. So that, you get, it's similar to myself, then you're thinking of just being versatile and learning some other things then as well. Right. I'd say persistence, like, like going, obviously adding to what you're saying, because that's true. Like I, I've worked with programmers that only do things one way and I've had to fire somebody for that before too. Like I hired somebody that this is the way I've done it. This is the way I do it. Well, it's not the way we do it now and he wouldn't switch, but being able to adjust to that. But as far as a persistence, like, we all run into crappy situations. It's guaranteed in what we do and we're all going to hit roadblocks. So being able to be stubborn enough in a good way to just stick with it, even though you're trying to figure out how to download a PDF for a single week, like how to build out and download a PDF. That's a problem that I ran into uh, at my company with a deadline too. Like we had to get it out and that was ridiculous, but getting stuck with stuff like that and being able to just no matter what can you know, continue with it because there's a, a lot of downsides to what we do. A lot of depressing moments, I guess. So if you can <laughs> stick with I, that. I honestly, I always describe web development to people as like, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm a genius. I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot. <laughs> yep. And it kind of goes in that cycle <laughs> over and over again until you solve the problem, really. Yep. Um, it is disheartening. Yep. I do. I, I forget about persistence. That is a uh, super, like it, it is something that like you will get there because... I know, and I probably shouldn't say it because you're not going to say people are, are dumb, but yeah, I know plenty of dumb people that can do this. Um, and it's just through sheer persistence that's got them there as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, one of the things that I, uh, you know, like to tell new developers is to learn, to learn, basically. Uh, I think, you know, all of us pretty much, you know, all software developers are kind of paid, not just for what we do, but, you know, for our ability to learn and upskill or cross-skill, you know, as and when need be so that you know we can pick up a problem and start solving it as and when need be so uh, i think when i started uh, you know learning new stuff i was just looking at you know how other people were doing it like you know some people for some people it works really well when they are you know reading something and they pick up really well for others it's watching videos for you know some other people it's just you know like a code long or something like that so i think the sooner you realize how you know what's the best way for you to learn you know it yeah it, it's just uh, yeah your life gets much easier from there on so you're basically talking about self-awareness too, right? Like you're saying yeah. and how you learn, like that's big too. Yeah. Like knowing your style. Cause there's, there's those people that are like, Oh, I've been coding since I was 11 and they're just insane at what they do. And that's not like me. Like I wasn't a natural born programmer. And I, I felt like what Niall said, you know, I was a dumb person when it came to this, at least like it was not normal to me. I'm out here typing with my two fingers like this. Like I wasn't techie at all. So I wasn't one of those typical programmers that you would imagine, but once I learned my style and I know, okay, I'm stubborn, I'm persistent, I know how to do this. And at the same time, like I do very well with the video and then documentation added to that while there's those people that can jump into the documentation and make sense of it, at least like in the beginning, like now I can read it pretty well, but understanding that for me, it takes a little bit of overview and then uh, going into the technical side. So that's something that you have to like learn about yourself. Yeah. Uh, exactly. on, a, on a total side note of that image of you with the two fingers, I just I want to see you do uh, a video of you being the Russian hacker. 
<laughs> in reality, like how this works. Have I got a typo? Yeah, probably <laughs> six days later until something actually is cracked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jay. Yeah. Um, I'd probably echo that. I think, yeah, I didn't really have that techie background, but I, I guess I'm just kind of fortunate that obviously there's a lot of hard work, but I, I pick things up real quick. So I guess I just kind of fell into the right thing for me. Um, but I kind of follow the um, kind of same things. That was, I guess it's like learning to be a problem solver or like having persistence at the same time, like pushing yourself through things. So like I, with my work, like it's always about, um well the thing i try and promote i guess is having fun with it but like always pushing how to do things like pushing things in different ways so i guess one thing that's come up a lot lately is uh instead of just following the tutorial and making the the crud app you know the to-do app is like well i'm going to take this tool i'm going to take that tool and i'm going to make it do something that no one else has done with it because that's how you learn the ins and outs of things especially with all these frameworks and stuff like it's just the best that's... way to to fantastic it advice so, i think a lot of people forget that as well just to like go off road no matter what tutorial you're doing figure out like out, even see the result and what how, how can you break it and make it your own try and push that with like all the projects um i try to word this in a newsletter but um i don't know it's really hard to get that concept out but just like make things for yourself just like follow what you want to do what you want to make like it doesn't have to be and I think, well, we spoke about this on the spaces, me and Dennis the other day, but it's like, you just make something that you want to make it and you'll find ways to make the tooling work for you. And then you'll learn stuff that other people haven't and you'll have great things to talk about. And, you know, there's so many benefits to doing that because you do something unique, you learn how to problem solve, you learn stuff that's not necessarily taught, then you have something to teach and then you have something to talk about and it it looks good to employers or potential hires. Like there's, there's so many benefits to it. Like a lot of the people that reach out to me or I get leads on like work opportunities because they seen something I've done or something like, you know, a demo or like a project I made. It's not like if I was just doing like tutorials, like how do you, how do you stick out from the crowd? How do you say like, I can solve problems. Like one thing I used to always say to clients is like, um, it's just pixels on the screen. Like I can make it happen. So, you know, nice. Oh, that is bold as well. Just say that. I'm like, I'm scared of those pixels, but I'll try. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's bold, but it, it, it works. You know, you set yourself those challenges. Um, plus, like, HTML canvas, you've got all the pixels there. You do what you want with it. <laughs> nice. Well, I think you, you're proof. If anyone wants to see the ridiculous, the ridiculous possibilities of what you can do with um, CSS, JavaScript, and anything else. I think, Jay, you're probably one of the most creative uh, developers I see active kind of out there at the moment. Um, so definitely, if anyone's like curious about what you can achieve, definitely go follow Jay for that sort of stuff. Because I know that's how we got talking originally. I was just blown away yeah. by some of the creations you um, made, and I was just asking questions. All the way um, back then, when we did that workshop, like think of, think of then and think of now, like how crazy it is. Like That was ages ago. <laughs> it was yeah we're we're still in lockdown <laughs> so <laughs> yeah it started it started during covid and it's still there um then switching to less kind of beginner advice and more selfish advice um i just want to more about yourselves as people then what are the proudest moments of your career or moment of your career like for myself i know i felt like i was I had a hefty nutsack when I um, when I went to my first uh, got my first job, and two weeks into it, they flew me business class to uh, Sydney, and I was working with like a hundred developers, and I just wasn't ready for that. I like I was making ten quid an hour before this, like two weeks previous to this. So like it was a shock to me, and I was like, I had my own personal PSP on the plane, right? It was just something I was not prepared for. It's never something that was even in my pipelines of going to Australia or anything. So um, for me, like that was a real proud moment for myself, like of just feeling that, of taking it all in and seeing that my life had taken a major turning point. Um, anyone else who wants to jump in after that? Maybe with better words. <laughs> I, I guess I can kind of relate to what you said right there. So I have like two moments. One was 
the the same thing where I built out my platform at the company and I finally was at that point where we were demoing the product. So same thing, flown first class. Uh, we're flying. At, I can't remember what state there was. We were flying all over the country at that point, but presenting my product at like conferences in front of hundreds of people, thousands of people in certain cases and being able to actually have what I built up on screen and know that a lot of my customers were in the audience. Like that moment was like, holy crap, like this is this is because of me, not the whole conference, but this moment, everything someone's looking at or everything the people here are looking at is is what I built. And then the, I would say probably the moment more proud than that was when my boss tried to steal that website from me and I had a whole fight over him, almost a lawsuit, and then I won and he had to buy it from me. So that was, that was a good moment. <laughs> nice. So those two. Anyone else want to jump in for a proudest moment of their career? So far, I'm sure we'll have bolder statements in a few years, all of us. It's a really tough one. I think because you get so consumed by what you're up to. Like, I am always busy, even now when we can't go outside. I, I'm dreading when we can because I have to make more hours in the day. But it's really hard. Like, you have to actually sit back and think, wow, like, I did that. Or, like, you did this. And you could just think of, like, so many different things. If it's, like, a flight thing, I always remember, um, I always remember, like, early on in my career, like, I ended up doing this front-end, like, terminal thing. And I got flown to Washington. Um, and it was, like, on the Thursday, it was like, hey, do you want to go to Washington on Sunday? Like, they need someone to train them on this stuff. And I got to go out there for a week. And that was pretty awesome. Um, D.C. or a state? Uh, D.C. D.C. D.C., okay. And then... Um, yeah, I ended up like in Virginia as well for a bit. It was really cool. Um, in fact, like the, I think the only time I ever go out to the states is when I have work on over there. So, <laughs> when I same reason I travel, yet, Jay. So I understand that totally. Try and kill as many birds with one stone, right? So, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, uh, I think yeah, you just think like everyone here and everyone that like well, just anyone you, you have like awesome moments that you can think like you're proud of but you just completely you get washed up in everything and just forget about them like it's so easy. yeah it's so and easy. if you're if you're jay you just you don't even like your website after a month so why would you be proud of it just like it's just like sitting things so like you <laughs> like you've done like you could turn around like you've built a community like that that's pretty awesome like that's that's rad like you've built something here like people are here chatting and stuff and you've done that like that's <laughs> things like that are really cool like companies you work for things you do places you go people you meet like blog posts you write like it is all stuff that adds up i think mean, we end up taking it all for granted really easily because we're just that's like, true so consumed by just creating and sharing it and like all oh, right what's next cool and you just forget about it that's true <laughs> yeah that's uh, it true. is very true i didn't even think of that myself even I, in my accomplishments i wouldn't yeah. have thought about the community aspect and the, the people you meet along the way um and it is that's it's about taking checking out. That's something that I probably we should probably do more of as well. Is just like not taking things for granted. It's it's very mm -hmm. easy to not feel like you're good enough in this industry all the time. Um, I think that's why it's uh, it's important to think about the times we won. Uh, John, what about you? What's the the moment for you? Well, you mentioned that, and uh, kind of with the YouTube channel, I was like, well, that's uh, they're okay videos, and and. I don't expect too many people to watch them, but then you get some really nice comments on some of them. And I remember one of them, this guy, he said, yeah, thanks for your videos. Because of that, uh, I think he said, I passed my thesis or or was able to do a presentation or something, something big like that. And I was like, whoa, that's that's really cool. Nice. Um, and I know, like, uh, Tej, you just started making content very recently as well. And you had the same moment where you were talking to myself and Jay when we were on the we we're playing games, yeah. and you had the same thing. You were like, "That was ridiculous! How nice it is when somebody says, hey, you yeah. really helped me.' Mm -hmm. That's like it's a, it's an awesome thing that again I've taken for granted now. Um, I'm sure Dennis, you have as well. Um, with this, it's like it's it's amazing that you do get that good feedback, and it's nearly becoming so normal that you just take it for granted. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah, yeah, that, that's a, that's a weird one. Like, I don't know how to deal with that. I'm still not good with it. Like, cause you, I get that comment, John, like, 
it blows you away. But then at one point, like you almost don't even know how to handle it. And you don't really feel like it was you either. Like when I, like I'll get people messaging me, like I got my, my job or I just did an interview and all the things that you said in your last video were, you know, were spot on. And it's like, I, I don't really know how to like take the credit for it either. Because like, in my mind, it's always like, I push it back to someone else. So it's, it's a weird thing, but it is kind of crazy to know that, that you had that kind of impact. It's a little right. bit overwhelming, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And like, uh, I think what Nile was saying there, like somebody uh, actually went to, I was just thinking about the effort that they, you know, they had to put into even just send that message across. They went to my website, they scrolled all the way down to the contact form and they filled out the form, sent me a nice message from there saying that they are a code newbie, but uh, my blogs are kind of helping them. And to be honest, I haven't written much yet, like probably like six or seven articles at this point. But even the effort that they put into, you know, just send that message across, I was just blown away. I was like, man, that's that is incredible. Like I was, yeah, that was that was a really good moment. You need you need to put the contact form at the top, save people the effort. <laughs> we're, we're, just, we're going to get distracted by Tej's hover effect, where you can just spin his head. Yeah, that's that's right right now. I just found him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just spin his head. Just keep on hovering over his head, and it spins and spins. I even made a little music video on LinkedIn there to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I should to be, be fair. But you should do like a, a faux loading sort of thing, where it just spins your head, and then the page comes in. <laughs> like like the That's Batman thing. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the Batman spinner coming in. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's a good idea. I mean, my idea behind that portfolio was pretty much to, you know, just play around with HTML, CSS, and just vanilla JavaScript and uh, you know, just deploy it all by hand to AWS and uh, you know, that contact form and everything. I think JV were talking about this that I could just very easily go to Netlify, like you said, and you know, enable it. It's it's as simple as that. You know, it's a feature that you know I should be using. And in my head, it was just like, I want to play around with AWS, you know, create a serverless API that I can, you know, integrate with SES, again, all of the Amazon stuff and just, you know, uh, use it on my own website because I preach a lot about serverless. So for me, it was just like, if I talk about this, you know, I should probably do it as well. And uh, uh, yeah, so I, think I, I have a lot do, of fun yeah. with that. Yeah. Like, I always say, do as I do. say, not as I do. Just do as I say, <laughs> not as I do. That's always the best way to follow uh, life. <laughs> It's good to do that stuff. They like build it with the the building blocks because then you'll appreciate when you use something else. Like I, I tried to word this in a way that um was kind of so we did a lot of talking about Tailwind recently, and I was trying to word it in a way that would like not offend. I don't know if that's the right way to put it. This sounds like I'm going to come out with something really controversial, but um just the, like sound bites. I can't wait to take all the sound bites out of this. Yeah. Like Dennis, I, Dennis just saying, no, like, call hey, dumb. JavaScript is the language, yeah. you know? That's a... I'm but screen the, recording uh, right now, Jay, so. Yeah, yeah. decent. <laughs> <laughs> no, just going to yeah. put it up like the Homer Sim Simpson controversy with the clock changing and everything yeah. in the background. Just how, like, uh, just how if you, so I tried to word this in a way because like a lot of people, um, especially if you're new, you hop on like React or whatever and you do like, so you see people make sites with like create React app and then you go visit the site and if your JavaScript don't work, then it blows up or whatever. But people like jump on these tech because it's like, it kind of goes back to uh, what we were saying before about like, what is the thing to look for jobs in your area? And so many job posts will be like React. So people naturally go to learn React. But if you never like built a site from scratch with like the, the basic tools, like you can never appreciate how much the things you use like help you out. So like when you do something with React or you do something with like WordPress or you know all those tools like do a lot of heavy lifting for you. So you just don't you don't appreciate it unless you've done it with the the basic building blocks. So I guess like with Ted, just like he's doing the HTML, CSS, JS, and like he's he's built a site. So next time he'll be like, Phew, this this carried so much for me. I, I like what you said. I, I can see why you thought that might be controversial because it has been and it cracks me up because Flor and Paul put out a tweet saying you should learn JavaScript before you learn React. And that's a very logical thing. And yeah. people are no. like, oh, stop, stop gate. Yeah, exactly. And people are like, stop gatekeeping. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not gatekeeping. That's logical. Sure, you can learn React before. Yeah. But yeah. That's that's just tech Twitter being sensitive. That's just. Yeah. But I learned I mean, React before not JavaScript. It's not and full. it slowed me down. I don't yeah. think there's any issue yeah. with people doing that either. Like, yeah, go for it. Like, if you can do both at the same time. Like, if you great. can do it. I, yeah, I, have, I, mean, I have people that try to learn Django before Python, and then they send me these, like, these errors. I'm like, that's not a Django thing. That's a Python thing. Sure, you can learn <laughs> one before the other. You can make it work, but is it practical? So when someone's saying, you know, when someone like Florin puts out a tweet like that, 
He's not saying you can't do one before the other. He's just giving you the practical example. And yeah, that's, yeah. That, that to me is hilarious. Like when that stuff gets controversial, I, I just laugh to myself because I'm like, oh boy, here we go. You yeah, know, well, how does this get controversial even? That's like, Twitter in a nutshell though, isn't yeah. it? Like, taking things out of context. So <laughs> like, yeah, to be honest, on, you can't convey his intentions and tone within like 280 characters of text. Like, you can <laughs> and you will react. <laughs> you will have your pitchfork gifts at the ready but, but that's the only thing with twitter as a uh, as a system you see you can't like like or dislike something so the only way to interact with somebody is by commenting mm. so like you have to voice your opinion you know that's that's how this that's this, that works really you know you have to like you can't dislike something you have to say you're wrong because yeah. in a yeah. short sentence <laughs> well, you i have of reddit for that like, you know, people just get downvoted and, you know, for no reason. And then eventually, you know, they'll clarify, this is what I meant. And then they get awards like, oh, yeah, no, that makes sense. That don't makes total sense. So, yeah. Twitter on the other side. Like, I tried messing around with my uh, my extension and then I have like a hide metrics thing now. So I just don't see any likes or retweets. It's just, yeah. just <laughs> content. And um, sometimes that's nice to browse through like that. <laughs> you know what's funny about tech Twitter is it doesn't represent tech like at all. No, like, that, <laughs> no it's like a small bubble. It's, like, it's only yeah. funny because like, yeah, like tech Twitter has these trends where like, oh, we're all bashing on this today. But like when you go into the real world, no resemblance at all. Like I talk about like even the popular languages and frameworks, like especially even like, you know, YouTubers that you know may have more of an audience that that can push the market in a way we can only do so much and we don't represent what the market is. No matter what I say about Node.js or Python, there's still going to be jobs and companies that have so much money invested. Like for example, React functional components or React class-based components. No company gives a shit about what I say on YouTube and what you should be using. There's companies that still use PHP. There's companies that still use React class-based components and they don't care what I'm saying. And that's kind of where it's funny, where we just like hop on this trend. This is what we're all doing now. Where it's like, at the end of the day, shouldn't we be working with the market? Because we're giving bad advice then if people can't get jobs because of it. So that, no, that, Dennis, that's that, that makes funny. sense. Stop. Are, <laughs> what are you doing? Where you don't get an argument out of being reasonable, okay? That's and that's true. not what Twitter is about. <laughs> no, but that is actually such a good point. Like I, to be fair, you know, I joined uh, Tech Twitter like a year ago. You know, that's when I started really, you know, browsing through, you know, what people on tech uh, on, on Twitter are really talking about. And I could only see JavaScript and Python. And again, yep. you know, Python only in the context that machine learning is the future. If you're not doing machine learning, you might as well retire. You know, like to that that level that here, you know, if you're a web developer change to you know switch over to machine learning today learn python today that's the way to go and I, like for the first few months i was just like like what is going on i was just really confused and then i actually saw like posts uh, like this one like director tech twitter is all about js and python but that's not what we do out there like we yeah. you know there's, there's a plethora of you know languages and frameworks that people use and it works for them so let's talk about that as well but doesn't go that way that's that's why i got onto this trend of php like i don't use php but i have, a, I have like <laughs> Four tweets in the last three days about promoting PHP just because I'm just I annoying love it. <laughs> Well, no, because that, that's my like, sorry, can I can I cuss on this or am I allowed to? Yeah, that's go my, ahead, go nuts. That, that's my fuck you to like the trends. Like, I hate that stuff so bad. I'm like, you guys don't get to decide this kind of stuff. Like, like for the PHP people, they'll, they go rah rah, they love it, and then everyone else is just freaking out. So I'm like, that's why, because it, I love poking no, the bear. I, the whole HTML is a programming language. My best response to that is like, okay, whether it is or not, why do you care? Like, is it for your ego? Because if it's for your ego to say I'm a programmer, that what, like that, then you're wrong because you're trying to validate yourself. Like, that's kind of a funny argument too. Bike shedding. Uh, Tej has seen me with people and I go like, I'm getting very annoyed at people over bike shedding in meetings. You see me. I think Tej, you probably see me angry in professional. Uh, places. Yeah, and I've also <laughs> really, like, you know, really, uh, you know, see you piss people off in a professional setup. To the point I remember the time when you know, like, somebody, you know, just really showed you the finger in the middle of a whole company meeting. I don't know if you remember this. Oh yeah, oh, no, I do. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, with the directors and everything. Exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, I do, I do tend to wind people up a lot. But yeah, when it's bike shedding and things like that, um, I can't stand it. There's no there's no room for it. Like, just get over it. Get over yourself, I think is the best way to put it. And um, don't worry about it. Learn how to be a better coder in yep. general. 
no matter what you're using. Yeah. yeah. I need another beer, so I'm going to get up for a second. I see somebody. All right. No worries. Yeah. I'm thirsty. That's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll allow it. That's, uh, that's important. Um, excellent. Um, right. Let's see. It, Tesh, I don't think we asked you. You're, you're proud of this moment. Or like, because I know I, I kind yeah. of, I spoke for you about the, the blog posts and things, but like, that's because it was recent. But yeah, what, what is your proudest moment of your career? Uh, yeah, so I think, you know, uh, this is something that I was, you know, just reflecting about off late and like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I think like Jay, you were saying that, you know, we don't really sit down and think about it. But then the other day, I think somebody, uh, you know, contacted me and they were looking for career advice. And I was like, oh, why are you asking me? And then I was just trying to, you know, think about it. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like in my head, I was like, I don't think I'm going to give you good advice. But uh, then I really thought about it that I was four months into my company and uh, they wanted up. Uh, I was, I started working in India, uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, I started my career in Bangalore and, you know, I was working for this company uh, who had, you know, clients in Ireland. Four months into the company, I was a junior dev and uh, like I was working really, really hard at the time, you know, just trying to upskill. And they decided that I have the skills to go to like to come to Ireland and you know take over another project from the same client and you know kind of just prove the metal that you know we have the capacity or the capability to take on new projects from you and they, just, they chose me to do that and I was like are, are you sure and uh, like my manager and the people who were talking to me they were like absolutely confident in my skills and at the time I was I was suffering from you know like major imposter syndrome like I, I don't know I mean I'm not sure if I know you know what you're talking about but uh, somewhere, you know, like they had better vision probably, but yeah, long story short, they decided to, you know, they chose me to come over, take on new projects and, you know, understand what the requirements are and all that four months into my career and, and on the flight to Ireland, I was just like, man, like in my head, it was like, man, I think this is great. Like, you know, that was probably the happiest I was, uh, you know, in my entire career that, that moment. Yeah. I, to I totally get that because it was the same kind of, I know, like for me, it was being on a plane that you would have never like you would have never put yourself on a plane to ireland for sure in where exactly. you were in your life yeah but like a, as a result of the skills you developed you're suddenly now trusted to fly to another country and advise people something yeah exactly so yeah that was that was a major moment for me nice yeah that, that, and that's awesome neil I, I don't know if i i didn't catch it you guys work together you and tej yes uh yeah, okay. yeah we've worked together we've worked very long and late nights together that's how I know Tej uh, originally. He he was when we started working together. You were offshore, weren't you, Tej? I was, um, yeah. Um, and then you came over and you thought I was a lunatic for a little while. Um, yeah, I mean, but, I don't think anyone you know would doubt that. Like, I think it's quite <laughs> evident. <laughs> but, but to be honest, there's a specific you know incident why I actually thought that. And Dennis, this is this is what happened. I was sitting down, you know, in my corner and doing my oh. work. He was he was on a video call with someone and apparently they were typing and you know whatever they're doing okay and the I, I think it was pretty loud. It's gonna make me uh, sound awful, so don't be, <laughs> don't take this out of context. I want to explain yeah, myself after this. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and it's fair, you know. <laughs> so uh, Niall, I think I heard Niall say like, "Who's typing? Whose keyboard's going mad?" And the other guy said, "Oh no, it's me. It's okay." And he was like, "No, it's not. It's not okay." Stop it right now. And I was like, whoa, okay. That's the kind of workplace this is. And like, I was very new. I was like, okay. And then soon after, you know, I could hear other people in the office laugh about it. And I saw like, okay, it's funny. Okay. It's meant to be funny. So that's, that's how, like my first impression of Nile was like, okay, he's an asshole. I'm not going to talk to him ever. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he it, it you was, five, you're saying, right? No, not him. It was, it was another one of our colleagues that I, oh, I was sure. uh, annoying. We were on the phone. And they had they had the gaming keyboard. We were trying to have a meeting, and they kept on typing. I said, "Hey, could you mute yourself if you're typing?" And then you know, but Tej didn't hear this part of the whole conversation, <laughs> so he just heard me get annoyed. Where he, he, uh, where the person was like kept on going, nobody could hear each other on the phone call, and he's like, "No, it's okay, it's okay," and he's telling me it's okay because I can't hear or nobody else can hear on the call. So I was like. No, it's not okay. That's you know, funny. And you know, I, you know, so it sounded like I was being really, really aggressive on the phone call, like telling somebody, "Shut up! You're not allowed to type when I'm talking." <laughs> you know? But really, just nobody could hear because it was a gaming keyboard in the background. Yeah, that's funny. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, because I remember you saying that to me after Tesh, and you're yeah. like, "Yeah, I just thought you were you you were not going to be a nice person to work with." <laughs> 
and I was giggling to myself because the poor fella got really scared after I said that. By like, because I, I didn't realize how harsh I came across either. Um, uh, and yeah, I got a giggle out of it because I was annoyed at the time. That's so you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that, that's uh, that's not how you introduce yourself to colleagues, I guess, by shouting at other people on the phone. It's probably not not, not a positive first impression, I'm sure. Yeah, it's only the office about a day, were you, Tej? Uh, it was probably my second or third day. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was just very, very new. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. His back to my back, so all he could hear was me giving out on the phone. Yeah. So, yeah, you can... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right, and then kind of last but not least, what I want to talk about is that everyone plugged themselves and what people are working on. Um, I might as well start with you, John. Anything you're working on in the near future or what you're excited about? Or, you know, like, is there anything in your career you're excited about or anything kind of in the content realm that you're excited about? And also, where can people find you? Yeah, well, um, I'm on Twitter, Jay Wood, um, or my website, johnwood.co.co. Um, what I'm excited about... Uh, I think it's okay to talk about. Uh, I'm working on a course for LinkedIn for AVAL.net, which is kind of my, what my channel is mainly about, uh, along with some other Microsoft technologies. But that's that's going well pretty far uh, so far. So hopefully people will enjoy it. Nice. Excellent. Jay? Um, oh, I don't know. Um, I'm making loads of stuff, I guess, like normal, but that's just standard um j.dev slash links but no one will spell my first name right unless they're reading it so <laughs> uh you can find me on twitter and career wise i don't know i'm kind of excited about that because i don't actually know what i'm gonna do next so just living in the moment yeah that's how we're going like i i stopped working in i decided to quit full-time work last september i did contracting for quite a few years before that and then i decided right I'm going to take another leap and see what happens. So I uh, did a contract in December. I've been doing other stuff, but yeah, I've started exploring. Who knows? Who knows what will happen? Nice. Uh, <laughs> Tej, what about you? Uh, yeah, so uh, I've been working as a solution architect and, uh, you know, come tech lead. I'm uh, a lot more back and heavy and uh, very little on the front end. I work uh, a lot on Java, Python, and uh, build microservices and serverless applications. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, or my website. Uh, it's Tejan Shrana everywhere. Or even GitHub, like, yeah, just Tejan Shrana everywhere. Uh, but yeah, that's me. I've also started blogging off late. And I am actually in the middle of writing the script for my first YouTube video. So hopefully that will be out soon as well. Uh, yeah, that's me. Bite the bullet on that, Tej. Like it's it, the hardest thing is that first video of getting it on, and even looking at my first video now, which is actually one of the videos that gets the most views still for me. Um, it is so cringy to wa watch because I'm like a robot and I just hate watching it. That's because the, I. That's the hardest thing about YouTube I found. So like I, sorry, I'm just completely derailing it, but yeah, just what Niall said, just push it because like. When I started it, I did streaming first because someone like people were like, oh, we want to see you do streaming the code pen stuff. So I started doing streaming and then I got picked up for screencasting and they're like completely polar opposites, right? So when I did YouTube, I was like, do I be really screencasty or, and I've kind of shifted towards being more live streamy and people prefer it because it's more kind of casual and I just walk through something. So just be yourself, Ted, just start firing out those videos. You know, like, I won't like you, Tej, but other people might. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, usually when you don't like someone, I think that's a good sign. So oh, I'll take that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we, sympathy subs on the way from Jay and uh, John and Dennis, I'm sure, will sympathy sub as well, just for the sake of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's great. Yeah, right. great. Yeah, get the channel up. Uh, we're going to sub and you'll be fine. But yeah, it is definitely for it, it, it. That'd be my only advice for starting is starting nearly just like we were talking about the portfolios earlier. Just get yeah. something online. It really helps. Um, yeah, Dennis, sure. uh, what are you working on? You, you're, you're always working on a lot of crazy stuff. So um, I would, I'd love to hear. So yeah, um, from a personal life, I just uh, moved my wife and myself across the country, 2,500 miles to Florida. So I'm loving it here. New chapter in my life. Let me scoot my chair over. And uh, yeah, we're just uh, putting out courses still. It's my year and 
three months into YouTube. So things are kind of slowing down in a good way in the sense of like financially, just kind of taking care of ourselves here, getting things set up. But yeah, always working on courses, hoping to eventually get into some projects maybe in a year from now, just because anytime I start building out something, like I'm way more into actually building applications than I am in teaching it, even though I love both, but trying to find that good balance and putting out courses and building cool things. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'm talking to Ben, uh, Ben Awad here about his dog house or doge house application and uh that i mean goes on to what you were saying the other day right because in the yeah. spaces you were like how do you find the like you just want to build you want to push yourself you want to learn cool stuff and yep like how do i yep. motivate myself to teach like everything because i just want to make <laughs> yeah there's there's times where i want to be left alone i don't want to put my my ugly mug on a camera and start <laughs> talking i'd rather just be alone in, in in code and then there's times where it's the other way around but yeah i, I just enjoy doing that but yeah, I, I get that because I, I've spent, especially the last few weeks, I haven't been putting out much content. And that's because, like, in the morning, I'm learning a lot more about, like, node microservices and things in the mornings and things that I'm not excited to teach about, but I'm really excited to learn. Mm, I don't want yeah. to kind of derail my learning by, like, having to feel like I have to put out things about certain things as I'm doing it. Because it, like, it, like, it's like the content creator's guilty pleasure, right? learning yeah. behind the scenes <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so true it's like am i allowed yeah. to learn this and not tell people <laughs> you know? like, i love learning new stuff yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, that is it, uh, i think that's a problem uh, a lot of people have especially when you, fe you feel like you owe people something as well when you're like when you have a following of sorts mm. so, so that, then like dennis you have like a, a, a much greater reach than the rest of us at the moment anyway um, mm -hmm. So like I can only I can only imagine that's amplified as it goes up, not like it's like ah oh, I can just step away easier. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it's, it's, it's kind of good with YouTube though, right? Because like you have like an uh, extensive back catalog, so p people are still discovering you even if you take a week out or two weeks out, right? Yeah, that's not the issue. Like I like I I went like two months I think at one point not putting up a video and it's still growing. Like it gets to that exponential point where mm -hmm. your all your videos are indexed and there's SEO content that, or content that people are searching up that gets pushed. But where I start feeling bad is when I know the problems that a lot of the my viewers are are having and I want to solve them, but I'm busy. Like you said, it's a guilty pleasure. I'm busy learning here about security and so on. Like I recently dug into that with the last like within the last week here and I'm in this rabbit hole figuring this out, but they're having issues with like server side things that I'm trying to solve too. So I don't ever feel like I I owe anyone anything, but there's still a sense of like, you know, if they, if they supported me, I want to make sure that I'm still putting out content for them, even though in theory I can stop today. Like I've, I've done enough. I feel like for the community to where uh, I don't have to do anything for them anymore. That's a weird way to put it, but I don't feel obligated. I get what you're trying to say, yeah. yeah. But I always yeah. feel that obligation to know that if they're still supporting me now, I want to give them new stuff. So they're always learning. So yeah, that, yeah. that's kind of a, a tough balance for sure. Yeah, and it's something you want to keep hot as well because, like, it is. Uh, it's very. Uh, it's a little bit of massaging our own egos in a sense. Um, but the the other thing is like it. You, you've made you've built this miniature empire for yourself in a sense of like <laughs> there's all these people that you know shouldn't know you, um, and now they do. So it's like you nearly feel like you have to keep it stoked and to a certain extent just because yeah. you know. That's a, it's like a, a miniature level of fame. Imagine what actors have to go through. Yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like real famous people. We're, we're talking about tech Twitter and giving out about like notorious people and tech Twitter and things. Imagine real fame. It's funny because I don't, <laughs> I never see, I never see Twitter as, as a, as my platform. Like I don't really, that's more of like where I just go on to maybe interact with people, but I've never like yeah. tried to grow that platform. Like I've never, I, I don't think I've ever really posted anything intentionally to grow. Like that's just more of my let's let's see what everyone's up to platform. But yeah, it's kind of a fun that's what it's becoming. It's becoming that for me as well because I don't like the outward style on there at the moment as well. Yeah, it's in, it's really interesting. I think every call and every stream we do, we end up talking about Twitter at some point. But yeah, <laughs> but well, yeah, I, I think if you're on it, it's hard to avoid that noise, though, as well. Um, yeah. it, like it, it somehow it trolls you it whatever it does psycho uh, psychologically to you, it draws you in. So they're doing something phenomenally there anyway, because it, it, really you can't help but think about it. We, we always want to for the content yeah. creator, right? Like I always say, yeah. it, like the, the friend and the enemy, because it's like 
that's where i mean for me like the bulk of my audience is there and that's where i like to share what i've made and what i'm up to but i i'd love to branch onto other platforms really so like not all eggs in one basket but it's hard to like jump around like you don't want to just go like right see you later like it just, you gotta try and be discovered yeah. right so Yes, it's really Twitter has its own style as well, and I think it's quite uh, for me especially. It's been quite difficult to just adapt to it. Like I see people, you know, constantly interacting with us. I feel that uh, you know, unless I am delivering value, what's the point of the tweet? Like I have written tweets and I've just deleted. Like I know somebody else has put it already. I don't think I do. You know, like I actually go out and look for similar content, and I see somebody posting that. I'm like, okay, I don't need to post this. No, you and... need to copy and paste other people's <laughs> tweets, put them out, pretend they're your own. Hopefully, to do better. <laughs> Didn't you know the 101 to like, you know, 100k subs or 100k followers is basically the same 10 tweets on a cyclical loop? Like, HTML is a programming language, um, <laughs> like, you know, all those kind of things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. See, I, I like the originality of Twitter, where like what it's supposed to be, I guess, in the sense of like just pure dialogue. Like, it's supposed to be a place like where. Uh, Tej, like you said, like if it's helpful and I get that too, I'll try to post something helpful. But at the end of the day, it's almost like a, a public thought bubble. Like that's the way I like to see it. And that's, I guess, why like I don't really grow on it. Like, I mean, I, I, I just have the link in my YouTube video so people will follow me there. But yeah, like to me, I like it because it's a little bit natural in that sense. Like, oh, I'm working on this right now, stuck on this, you know, just put, put out like the thought that comes with it mm-hmm. or this just happened and I just kind of shared that. So I just see it more as my quick way to engage with an audience. Cause I do have like these moments that occur and I could make a YouTube video about it. And sometimes I do, I'll just like, Oh, that's a perfect video. I'll go do that. But sometimes I'll just write it in a tweet and post something out there. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. I think yeah. It's very helpful for people who are trying to grow themselves, especially for new developers and things, be interactive in the community. It's, it's amazing how many opportunities and people I've met through Twitter as well. And through mm. all these networks, discord, Slack groups, YouTube and everything else, it's like, it's amazing uh, the amount of opportunities that are opened up by just putting yourself out there as well. And I think a lot of people forget about that as well. That's the big thing as well. Like, you can build so many like communities or find people. Like, everyone here is, I've found through Twitter, you know? Like, I didn't know Niall until we spoke through Twitter. Like, so you can't really slam it. I think it's, yeah. it's nervously it's slide into his DMs, you know? Yeah, but it's a great place to like, <laughs> cause, like that's where for me like i share stuff and people see it people reach out and then it's like the starting point to going to other places like now we're chatting to each other on youtube or like I, we like discord because you know it's casual you can just type to each other during the day and stuff so yeah we can't slam it too much <laughs> yeah <good. laughs> there's, there's more of like the tech twitter stuff that i think we're kind of making fun of but it's twitter as a whole like in what the platform is about i actually really like it and that stuff i wouldn't slam yeah. it there but yeah, yeah. there is there's I, a particular um annoying bubble i guess yeah <laughs> I, I did i had a tweet that just kind of went you know big overnight here and it's a it's just a story i shared so niall you were talking about this isn't like a horror story it's just a funny story outside of the church website one but which i can share that one too but some uh, i put out i put it out in a tweet but some guy hacks my website right so i have my my own course platform he hacks my website goes and unlocks the like I have like a free and a premium version. So he modifies his account. He's able to hack it. And then he sends me an email. Hey, I hacked your site, but I'm a good person. So uh, I'm just going to let you know about it. And that was it. But that was pretty funny. He hacks it. He lets me know about it. And at that point, I was like, sweet, you pointed out a bug so you can have the account. Like I just left his account open for free. He told me who he was. And uh, yeah, so that tweet kind of went crazy. Like over last night, it was like, Got nice. 340 retweets, 2,200 likes. Like I was like, what the hell? That's kind of a funny one, but it's a, it's a nice hacker there. You hack, hacks you and then tells you, but I was able but to I, solve that bug. But I, I also appreciate you putting yourself out there and, you know, exposing that. Yeah, I had a bug and, you know, that's it. You know, I think a lot of people don't even do that. And uh, that kind of annoys me as well about tech Twitter. Like, you know, talk about, you know, your struggles and, talk about uh, your flaws as well. That's just very important. Like, you know, uh, yeah, my code works, but I know, you know, there is something that I did, which I should not have done. So talk about that as well. That's, that's great. So I can see why I I can see that. I had to fix the bug first and then let people know. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) smart. 
Well, I would somebody... have thought that far ahead, Dennis. I would have been like, guess what? There's this bug on my website and it gives everyone free accounts. Well, somebody asked me what the bug was, so I, I shared it with them, but I had to make sure it was fixed before because if I tell them what it is now, I just gave them not just the fact that there's a uh, there's a there's a vulnerability in there, but how to do it too, which is pretty easy. It was like it was a silly little thing. Uh, yeah, excellent. So that's that is hilarious. Um yeah, um, I think before we go off on too many more tangents and before I get more beers into me, um, yeah, I think we'll call it a night here. Anyone have anything else to add to beginners before I cut the stream? Go do it. Anything motivating? You pull up some motivational quotes. <laughs> yeah, like- yeah, all right, yeah. All right, Every, everyone, everyone Google for like 20 seconds for like motivational quotes. And we'll all come back and pretend they're our own. Because that's what <laughs> reposting is about. Exactly. Motiva- motivational. I'll take you can do it. You got that one? <laughs> From Shia Lee, right? Your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. The big secret in life is that there is no <laughs> secret. Whatever your goal, you can get there if you're willing to work. Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> nice. No, Jay. Six. You get you no, Jay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Success is I haven't read this quote all the way through, so I hope it doesn't end up bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll just read whatever came up first. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is courage to continue that counts. That's Winston Churchill. What a lovely guy. <laughs> We're all about attributing the source on here. You know, you got to Oh, oh yeah, it. sorry. Uh uh yeah, that was Niall Meyer. No. <laughs> yeah. There's John, one I, yeah, there's one I actually remember, uh, and it kind of sticks with me uh, sometimes. Uh, I think it's an old Chinese proverb, but it was uh, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time is now. So that's good. damn, that's, that's some real yeah. advice. Yeah. <laughs> you ruined the game, John. <laughs> How about Mike Tyson? Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> That's programming. That's literally programming once you get into the job. So, yeah, there's only so much you can plan for. Uh, has everyone has everyone given us a quote? Tesh, have you given us a quote? Yeah, I started this. Come on. Oh, Come on. okay. Yeah. It's beers. What's everyone That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what we're going to do for the weekend, I guess, uh, hopefully play some games, chill out, mm-hmm. uh, relax. Is anyone going to overwork the weekend? Dennis is in Florida, so I guess he's I'm not allowed to work anymore. Yeah, yeah you're not allowed to work anymore. You're in Florida. Yeah. Uh, so is everyone taking the weekend off? Yeah. Yeah. Chill out. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. All right. Well, for everyone that's learning the code, you can't have the weekend off. You have to keep learning. But we <laughs> professionals are going to have the weekend off. Until next time. <laughs>